six oh one. I learned from Donald. <laughs> uh, are there any additions or that that if this is in your way, you can push. I have an addition, which is okay. I, so. I actually have two additions, which are one is um talking about the spigot. Spigot, spigot. You could call it a hose spigot. Spigot, spigot at wow. Legion Field for ice skating. The other is um and we'll throw that in the committee area. Um, and the other is talking about Eric, Eric's moving on to greener pastures. Here is your for those trustee. Oh, is it? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that That's a definite no. I have to ask the rumor out in the world that Eric's running for village trustee. Um, so anyway, a uh, celebration of a ridiculous number of years. Good riddance. <laughs> I don't believe it's um, Okay, so those are the two items. And we'll add that one to, maybe we'll put that in the new items section. And that's a really old item. <laughs> <laughs> really old. Um, discuss and uh, while well, we don't have any legislators here, have you heard from them? I have. I spoke. I spoke to all three. Uh, Dan is going to join us via Zoom. Kate won't be able to make it, and uh, Rich is going to join us. I'm not sure if it'll be Zoom or. Well, I'm not on Zoom, and I don't see anyone there. So let's move on to library budget. Um, thanks for joining us again. Uh, okay. The library budget begins on line sixty. Yep. Okay. The revenue portion. Expense is 248, right? 248, yep. Just tell me you don't have that committed to memory. It doesn't take that long to look through an Excel sheet. I know. I just wanted to know that you didn't know. We should highlight each different section in colors. It would be. We could go through more toner that way. Yeah. Okay. It's so let's get. Way. Let's get. Moving because we if we start conversation now, we're never going to end, and Evan's going to blame us all later. It will happen. You are welcome. Well, he's going to blame Eric. Eric. Uh, okay, so Stacy, let's see. We talked about a number of these things, but I think there were a few follow ups. That is there anything I guess that you want to present right off the bat, or do you want us to jump right into asking questions? Um, well, we already talked about revenue and why our revenue has been down over the past two years. Yeah. Right? You guys remember that? We did, yes. <laughs> okay. And then, um, so we've tried to cut some costs, but some things inevitably have gone up, like inflation, you know, materials, and things like heat. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I guess if you guys have any questions. So the other line for library is line 248 for expenses start. Uh, how did you come up with a 7.9% increase, 9.7% increase for salaries? That is the calculation for what uh, was proposed for town employees. So that Six months at <coughs> and six months at a seven point four percent, which overall increases it. Yeah, almost ten percent. In the past, the library had not been participating the same way that the rest of the town employees do on making the increases, salary increases effective January first. 
But I learned that last year, they actually did. Right, goes Mary. Too. Yes. I just don't see how six months of 6% and six months of 7.4% equates to 10% increase. Well, you can do the math. I mean, that's the one that I came up with. Because it's 7.4% on top of a 6% increase. The compound of that. Fair enough. So it should be the same number that you're getting for all of them. Right. Is that the way we do, is that what we've done the calculation, Brian? Yes. It should be. I can be easily convinced. I didn't know that last yeah, year close. started following. I didn't either. So, so it, it's probably worth it for us to revisit and check this, but I don't expect it to be. Well, if this year, the six percent, right? And but you know, the way it goes for a fiscal year, yeah, it's six months the one increase, and then right. right. So that could affect the uh, two point nine library salaries. It it could. I mean, we can double check for, it for your year end estimate. But I don't. Oh, the year end estimate. Um, I don't think that's going to change. Yeah, because we've done half a year. We're not really, just about half spent. Yeah, we're pretty, pretty so, on track with that. So that year end estimate you have takes into account the increased salary that they're going to be uh, rolling out. Yes. Okay. Is um is insurances is that health insurance also? Yes. Okay. And there's a change in insurance coverage, and that's what's resulting in that decreasing a little bit. Beth, can you hear me? Yes. So I had a little bit of a difficulty logging on to the Zoom. Um, so I'm not, have you, where are you on your agenda? Have you? We're, we skipped over the legislators for the moment. And are, they not, are they not coming in or? Well, I see that Senator Richmond is here. Others, Dan, too. So we're just going to cover. <laughs> yeah, this. Dan and I are both here. Okay. We're just going to cover this first and then we'll circle back. Okay, because I, I did want to try and make an, an addition or change to the agenda when I... <laughs> okay, well, let's get through the library and then we can pick that back up. Okay. Um, okay. Um. So we've, we've asked questions. Do you have more questions? I don't have any more questions on any specific line items. Um, it was an increased cost to down taxpayers a 19% last year for their budget. And it's going to be roughly an 11% increase this year, which will equate to 30% over two years, which just seems very high. Mm -hmm. Are there areas that you've discussed in the trustees um, about other expenses that could be cut or are there? I mean, we've discussed, we've tried to make cuts where we could. And I mean, I, you know, we have to take care of the building. We have to pay salaries. We have to keep the building for the public. Yeah. There aren't really many um, places where we can cut the budget and keep the heat on and the lights on and programming um, going forward. Yeah. And I, I think it's worth noting that uh, while the town's contribution may be increasing uh, overall their budget increase, 
is uh, even less than uh, cost of living. It's because the revenue is down. Yeah. Your building capital expense uh, was quite a bit underspent in 2022, and you haven't spent anything so far this year. So are you planning on keeping yeah. that at the 70? So last year, it was the issue of getting contractors. So we have projects we have to do, but we couldn't get contractors before the end of the fiscal year, and that money didn't make any sense. So um, this, well, within this current year, we're trying to start replacing some of the basement windows, which has been a big issue, a security issue, and a, also a you know, energy efficiency issue. Um, but windows are really, really expensive. <laughs> so um, we're trying to spread that cost over two budgets. So this current budget, and then that's what you're seeing for them, the next budget is to do the rest of the windows. So we're, we're thinking we're going to buy some of the windows and then hold them until we can have them installed next year. Or else have some some replaced. Some well, of the worst ones is like replaced. There's some that won't even shut up at this point. And um have the other ones replaced in the next year. That's what that is. I mean, I guess my opinion on, on this is while I don't love the increases either, I do see the effort in decreasing a number of areas too. Uh, and the increases are in all the increased areas that have, there aren't a lot of con options to control. I don't like you have to keep the building and you have to pay people. Um, and, uh, I mean, I'm just saying that I think the library in particular has done a pretty good job with due diligence. Fair enough. For what it's worth. I, I never said they didn't. I mean, really that the circulation numbers and programming numbers and how many people are going to the library are already have hit where they were pretty total. So it's like, you know, they never, circulation stayed high through COVID when everything else was shut down. Um, and the programming has gone almost to the path that we had with COVID. Like the number of people showing up for program and also circulation. So it's like almost like more it's busier than we mm -hmm. work. That's good. Just if you want to think of it in terms of service and count. Yeah. What people think. Okay. Fair enough. Good questions. I would. I can just say that I was disappointed for those of us living in the dark two weekends ago that the library closed on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have this whole community out here living in the dark with no electricity, and the library closed when you did have electricity. Well, uh, that's easy, right? right. <laughs> that's 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 for me. That's a great job on the hill. Yeah. So yeah, the library did, did have Christmas, as I think has always been. Uh, talking about some of those numbers that are hard to control, um, I think we need to put some time into seeing about making some of the buildings more efficient when we have it. The library would be one of them. I agree. I know that yeah, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, we would, yeah, if there's any help you guys know of getting some of that done, that would be great. So one thing we're doing this year is having the solution um, added in the ceiling, because that was in an inspection, an area they said. Um, and do you have a, one of those nest thermostats? That's my little gauge. I don't know. That's money well spent because you know what? Well, a you programmable third. It's it, anyone like that. It turns on an hour before the library opens. I think it, I don't know. I, I can't answer for sure. I don't work with her staff in the library. <laughs> it's just not, it's a good idea to save on heat, which is expensive. Um, 
Okay, thank you for all of your patience, Stacey. We really appreciate it. Can I make an observation? Yeah, please. Um, I I think the library did a great job. Um, am I missing something? It looks to me like their <coughs> total expense side of the budget is up four point three percent. Is that is that what I am I looking at a wrong spreadsheet? Uh, no, that's correct. That's right. Yeah. That's okay. Right. I I'd I'd say that's good. I'd say that's a good job. Thanks, Duncan. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, you're welcome to hang out if you'd like, Stacy. Uh, fun. Okay, it's your loud. Um, that's a much more fun. Uh, Duncan, agenda items. Yeah, and I'm not sure what the best way to approach this is, so I'll throw it out. Um, I'll tell you what my end goal is. I I know that we reviewed the proposal. <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> from Mumley and Associates for the industrial park, light industrial park. I would like to- I'll find out in the next meeting. Revisit that issue. Um, and I'd like to formally take action. And I think, you know, what we what we need really is a proposed contract. So I, I, I don't know what the best way to do it is. I'm prepared to make a motion to uh, review and approve that uh, contract tonight, and it'll either live or die, or make sure that it's on the agenda for next meeting. Um, okay, you can make a motion whenever you'd like. Uh, I think we should warn something like that personally. But. Well, um, I'd be interested in hearing, you know, if the rest of the board um, feels that that would be a more appropriate, I'm fine with it. Um, I, I would just like to get it on. If, if we don't do it tonight, I'd really like to get it on the very next meeting as an action item. Cause I don't think we've got time to waste on this. Ah, uh, if I had it in front of me and very fresh in my mind, I would be comfortable with a motion tonight, but I don't. So I fully agree. We can't waste time, but I would prefer it at the next meeting if you're okay with that. Yeah, I I, I get it. Um, I, I know I'm springing a, a bet on people and that's never a good idea. So I'll just, I'll just also add that I will, I am likely to propose paying for that. Um, the the sum total that I would be talking about is the thirty two five in his proposal, which does not include the survey. Um, and I would propose using ARPA funds to pay for it. Just just as a heads up for everybody. Okay, we'll start it on uh, the sixteenth. Okay, let's shift gears. Legislators, welcome back. Um, I'm going to move my computer for this part, so just bear with me. I'm mostly going to move it so other people can see your faces in the room, too. <laughs> We're sharing a screen today. We're in Montpelier. Seems to me, it seems to me we've seen their faces plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, we've seen you great. before, too. Well, it's still like the same. Like, Ryan's Westman gets younger every year. Yeah, right. I've got more gray hair than you do. <laughs> That's true. It's only because I have more hair than you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, okay. having us yeah, thanks yeah. for coming. I, um, one of the reasons we invited you for a number of reasons, one of which is we're interested to hear what you have on, in mind coming into your next session. Another reason is because we're in the midst of hopefully solidifying our budget pretty soon to give to the taxpayers and uh, find out where we're going to land. Um, and part of that is getting information and a little bit of knowledge from you. On, if, on whether or not there's anything that we should expect or not expect that typically, you know, would change what we typically expect. 
Uh, is there more money out there? Isn't there? What is it for? Uh, are things being pulled? Like, what is your feel going into the session? Um, and then just a Q and A if you have them for us or if we have them for you. Sure. So, I mean, to start, this today was the second day. Um, we got our committee assignments yesterday. I'm back on human services. Um, and, um, yeah, um, I guess, uh, you know, it's really early in the session for us to be able to say kind of like, what, is there more money? I mean, I know that there was a report that the, they put out every year on um, revenue for um, education fund, but also every year by the time we get to town meeting, those numbers and the yield are totally different. So you really can't take much, can't put much, um, can't use those numbers to, to rely on those numbers because they change so much every year. Um, you know, as the, um, as the revenue comes in and the revenue projections change as we go through, and then also the education fund, uh, education committee and the um, appropriations starts, you know, looking at the governor's budget, which we won't hear the budget address until later in the month. I believe it's the 20th is when we hear the budget of the governor. Um, but uh, I don't know if you want to add anything, Senator Westman. Well, um, so to maybe add on to where Dan is, um, our revenues are um, up as of the end of November and, and, and December will be out this week um, in the collections. We were up about $80 million in revenues across all state funds. Most of that in the general fund and most of it viewed as one-time funds. So if anybody had ideas about doing anything, it would be around one-time funds. When the governor spoke today during the governor's budget address, he talked about um, a, an initiative to help small towns deal with grant applications and um, ways to um, put them in a position where if they have um, sewage treatment problems, water problems, those kinds of things, how do they get their grants in to do that? That might be helpful to maybe not to the town of Johnson, but the village of Johnson, as they talk about upgrades to their plant, if there was an application to that, not knowing what the governor is talking about in details about that, but that might be. But there is one time money that's out there. I will say to you that um, the first place that I personally want one time money to go to is um, to um, the state college system. They are asking for 10 and a half million in one time funds to be able to accomplish their reduction in tuition. They're also asking for um, um, an increase of about two and a half million in their base funding. Um, um, but that will be in next year's budget, but that one-time money could very well come in a budget adjustment, which the governor will make his proposal for the budget adjustment, which is the adjustment for the 23 budget this week. What Dan talks about in the 20th is, um, the 24 budget, which will be next year's budget, which will be the governor's budget at the end of the week. But our revenues are up. They're um, up in a way that will only give us money to spend one time. They aren't base funding going forward. Um, that's a little complicated for people on, to understand, but um, I would tell you my number one priority though is, um, um, is basically the campus on the hill. I also, I'm on the uh, Rural Development Caucus, and one of the things we spoke about this morning was really trying to look at the capacity of uh, rural Vermont towns to access grants and, and how we can make investments on, the, you know, increasing the capacity. Um, and I know there's going to be some legislation coming out of, around that, some investments, um, you know, to help help towns apply for grants and help towns um, administer the grants. Um, there was also talk of a, a universal grant application so that it's the same for 
the different um, grants that are out there. So it's not like there's always something different. So once you have one grant form filled out for the town, you can apply for multiple multiple grants from different agencies. Um, you know, that was just some discussion in a meeting I was at this morning at eight o'clock. And, you know, I know that that caucus is really interested in putting in, um, you know, kind of this omnibus bill that that will address some of the issues small rural towns are faced with. I, I just say, you want to back that up the governor talked about towns of under a thousand people and helping them with grants in it. I think any community, uh, and we can argue about size, but for me, any community that's under 5,000 people in Vermont can't compete with the larger communities to get state grant money. Yeah. And also have the capacity to administer them and match. We talked about, uh, also matching funds where, you know, maybe prorate it based on population and also based on um, uh, income levels in the town. So, you know, a, a wealthy town might have a different uh, match formula than, than a, a, a more rural town that doesn't have the income. So there's, there's a lot of talk about that also in this legislative session, so. Hmm. That's all very interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it is that, nice though that this rural caucus has pulled together and there was about 40 people in the meeting this morning, um, you know, from all across Vermont, from rural areas, really trying to band together and work collectively to, to help small communities because there is a lot of Chittenden County represented in the, in the House and in the Senate. So um, I'm hoping this will be, you know, some stuff will come out of this, so around also around development so you know i would say as the governor proposes an idea to help communities apply for grants and in in his view smaller communities um what a town like johnson would need mm -hmm. and telling us particularly for me from an appropriations standpoint and what I could add in to do that would be helpful. We've talked a lot about grant administration, a lot. Yep. Uh, and that's really a big deal for us to hear. So anything like that is super helpful. We've also yeah. spent quite a bit of our time talking about ma building maintenance and asset maintenance and mm -hmm. um, efficiency and how we fund some probably bigger product projects as our buildings age. Um, and then of course there's the ever changing cost of materials and equipment that just keeps skyrocketing <laughs> along with fuel and all the other, you know, necessities mm -hmm. that are really just pushing our budgets up pretty significantly this year. Yeah, because because we don't deal with it on the level that you do every day, any information and recommendations about what we could do to make it easier for you would be great. Yeah, okay. Um, what are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking a couple things. First, um, I know Senator Westman and Dan, you know how important pilot is to us and that, that mm -hmm. I mean, that is just critical to the survival of our town. Um, so mm -hmm. any, you know, as you, as you, no, um, that that moves around year to year, but we we try and be conservative with our estimates of it. But <clears throat> the survival of the college, thus pilot, also is super important to us. Um, what what are you seeing with um, the statewide property tax, and to a lesser extent, um, CLAs and the rest, common level of appraisals in the rest of the state? Um, is the education fund pretty flush? And um, as of um, from the joint fiscal office, and this was as of the end of November because they haven't finalized the um, numbers for December. Um, the education fund remained ahead of forecast by about nine point five percent. So the poss possibility that um, the statewide property tax may get reduced a little bit. Um, you know, uh, January is the month where, where January is the month where um 
uh, the revenue estimates come in and they come in around the 15th of the month. So we'll know better then. But the likelihood is because um, we've been running, uh, um, the education fund is running ahead of forecast. And a majority of that's coming on the side of the sales tax. Really? But, but even on the side of the property tax, we're 3.2% ahead. So we are ahead on both sides. So I don't, given if the numbers hold firm to what they were, to what we've got the calculation, we seem to be in an okay position. Uh, very nice. And there, there's also talk that, you know, the CLA um, across Vermont has drastically changed with, um, you know, the, the, the change in the market prices and the reassessment has definitely been on the mind. Uh, I've been hearing about that from my other colleagues down here about how our town's going to reassess um, and how are they going to pay for that? So, well, I can imagine some of that capacity will be talked about this session as well. I, I would say that that becomes a problem because the CLA has gone up for so many uh, across the state by such a large degree that there is a whole chunk of towns now that are facing being out of compliance and there aren't enough preasers out there. Yeah. So as you think about that, you might want to be proactive about that. And um, one of the things we've talked about in the Senate for the last couple of years is the per parcel um, 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 amount of money that we give back, um, you know, should that go up? And, but, but physically, even if you have the money to do a re, um, appraisal, um, there aren't the pe enough people out there to do those appraisals because we've had such a run up in property tax, uh, property values. Well, uh, that, we, we have to go ahead. Yeah, that's coupled with the fact that it's, kind of a dying uh, industry, or I was going to say trade, uh, but this mm -hmm. problem is only going to get worse, even if there's not more towns looking for reappraisals, maybe the way appraisals are done needs to be relooked at and simplified. I, something. Like well, it, and yeah, we definitely have heard that. And I've even heard of one proposal that moves um, education funding away from property and to income. Yes. Um, but, but that doesn't so, solve the appraisal issue. It doesn't we, 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 appraisal yes, issue. I mean, moving right. moving education tax away from property tax into income tax is not solving the problem right. we're talking about. That's a good point. Yes. But there, that's one of the proposals that I've heard. Rosemary, do you have not a question? Not the problem. I would like to say that we did give you guys a very small window, unfortunately. We could talk for a long time. <laughs> I'd love to have you back. Yeah. I'd like to offer one concrete um, idea for the legislators to think about. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes, please. That's Duncan who's out on the Zoom. I'm just shutting Evan down with my stairs. All right. <laughs> so so rich and rich and dan thanks very much um as far as concrete proposals um we're, we're facing right now the very real well we don't we are going to be operating without a town assessor um so we have entered into a service agreement with two other towns to try and hire a uh a, an assessor through the Moyle county planning commission uh this will come as news to the board but as of tonight um we have not had a single uh, person respond to the ad for uh, that that contract service position. So we're we're going to be in a drop back ten and punt situation very soon here. Um, so the same thing um, applies to the idea of um, you know community development, economic development. Um, so if and, and we've talked about, you know, the possibility of doing something like that on a more regional level or sharing a position. So on a concrete uh, basis, it might be appropriate to think about amending the statutes to allow um, 
greater flexibility among towns to do intermunicipal contracts. Um, and I, you know, I can talk with you guys offline a little bit more about yeah, that. I, any, it, it, that's exactly what I'm getting at in talking about, because there's not enough people out there to do this work. How do we get through this bump? And so any suggestion, that's a very useful suggestion that I can bring up or and Dan can bring up in the, um, the right, right places. But, you know, clearly last year, the um, Senate Finance Committee put a proposal out to increase the per parcel allotment, thinking ahead that this was going to come. But um, it isn't just money. It's there aren't enough people out there doing this work. Mm -hmm. So, um, so any proposals like that, that you could come up with, um, I'd love to pass on to um, the finance committee and, and push. Thank you. Uh, Eric, you have a question? Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I was just wondering with the drop in the workforce, what we might be looking at for reduction in revenue into the state with uh, income taxes. And on the flip side, uh, just playing off what Evan had said uh, or Mark with the, the amount of pilot money that we uh, you know, depend on, last the current budget year, the state is providing about 750,000, a little north of that in all the different areas from uh, you know, age for highways to pilot, et cetera. Um, I would hope none of that was in jeopardy because as we're building our budget tonight, literally, uh, depending on that is revenue. And I'm sure what's what's pilot funded through? Is it funded through the sales tax? It's a formula a through. It, 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 well, there's a piece of it that's local option, and uh, there's a piece of property transfer tax. Oh, okay. so that it so um, it's a formula, and um, um. You know, at this point, I don't see anybody in the short term messing around with pilot. But what you bring up, Eric, is in the long term. And I just say this to you uh, to um, to warn you about the future. Um, if you went go to um, 2019, our workforce has dropped by 26,000 um, um, people since 2019 to this year, according to the Department of Labor. You got 26,000 people. colleges have closed? <laughs> What's that? How many colleges have closed? Well, you know, it, it, it goes 26,000 people is the size of our county. Yeah. So that's the number of jobs and less people working is the size of Lamoille County. So, and everybody that works pays income taxes. So there are estimates from our economists that our revenues over the next two years will drop by 130 million. And we've got the federal government doing less. We've got one time monies right now that are running ahead. So I think for the next year, we're okay. But going beyond that, the signs don't look good. And um, and I just raised that as kind of a flag to you in where we are. And, you know, yes, you're right. A few of it is college positions, but a lot of it is we had, um, there are 9,000 people that just quit the workforce. Some of and them I think, retired. Yeah, and I think some of that's retired. I think there's a number of reasons and I think we have to analyze that. But after this year that we're coming and building the budget for, things don't look too, too great. And I think we need to be aware of that. And, you know, I'm going to have it, a, it I'm gonna gonna, all kinds of, just going to stop you there, Rich. Um, that's okay. Have like five, I'm going to give five more minutes to this because I do just want to make two points personally and just see if anyone else is to. But the one one point I just want to make is law enforcement is about a quarter of our budget. It's really expensive yep. for us. And in my view, in asking a lot of questions, 
much of the cost of law enforcement is actually social service costs, not law enforcement cost um, and public safety separate from law enforcement. Um, and that concerns me a lot that our costs go up so much and we have very little control over that um, yep. reality. Um, so that's one thing and we need to figure out something to do there. Another is, um, is about economic development. And I think that talking about grants is great. I like really like talking about grants, but you heard Duncan mention right before you, your um, agenda item came up that, you know, we're going to pay $3,200, $3,300 for a study that's actually not going to get us an engineering plan. Uh, Thirty-two thousand. Oh, sorry, thousand. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I meant to say thousand, not hundred. Thirty-two thousand for just a study, not a plan, uh, not a design, not anything else. So, how do towns like us manage that? I mean, how do we manage it from a construction project management standpoint? Because we can't do that. We have to bring somebody else in who's going to cost us, you know, many more thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. At forget the construction itself. And those types of economic development projects are really important to make us sustainable and to bring those people in that we're talking about that we're losing. Our demographics aren't here because we don't have infrastructures in place to support them. I really believe that. Vermont's a beautiful place. People love coming. You already know, I've heard you all both preach it, but they can't afford to live here. And they can't afford to live here because we don't have the infrastructure in place to build mm -hmm. economically. Uh, at scale. And I'm not saying I want Johnson to be a big city. That's not what I'm saying, but I am saying that we're a big enough community that we should be able to support white collar companies coming in um, when it comes to internet electricity. We shouldn't have outages for multi multiple days because we got some wind. We live in Vermont. We're in valleys and mountains. There's wind. Um, you know, there's lots of things to consider and at scale, we can't do that in a small community. So I think that's the type of thing where having state support in bigger economic projects and visionary projects um, through the different agencies and um, that type of thing would be really beneficial. Not, not to uh, minimize best concern about the cost of the study, but I just want to be clear that that Mumley proposal would be an update to an existing um, engineering proposal and would actually get us to the point of um, submittal for an Act 250 permit. It wouldn't cover all of the costs associated with the Act 250 permit, but it would get us a plan which could be submitted and it would be um, actually submitting a plan to Act 254 approval. So one step in a long cog of effort and cost. Yes. Um, so that kind of bureaucracy, because it's kind of what it ends up being, is gets in the way of us being productive. So, so uh, well, go ahead and then I got well, a question. Well, the first thing I'd say is your first half of talking about mental health, um, the, the whole mental health system needs to be um, looked at and talked about. Um, you know, places like Lamoille Mental Health are stretched to the limit um, and it's affecting um, local law enforcement and it's affecting um, our hospital where, um, because they can't um, take people in, um, they're basically got two rooms at Copley sitting um, with mental health patients and putting our, um, the emergency room at the hospital at risk. So um, it's well noted about um, the mental health piece in, in the front side of that. Um, barring me talking too much, go ahead, Dan. Um, you know, just, um, you know, we are working on with the sheriff's department on um, trying to help them out with um, their health care, um, I'm sorry, their retirement, um, and allowing uh, Lamoille County Sheriff to get into the 20-year retirement 
So it would help with recruitment and retention, which has been an ongoing problem. Uh, but that's you know, not going to cut our cost. Yeah, I hear you. But I mean, the reality is that's not going to cut the cost of service. That's just adding more people. And I'm not saying we don't need them. I'm just saying it's a different problem. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you ask for feedback. There you have it. I'll ask yeah. local government. <laughs> Um, well, I'm going to just stop there if we could, um, if there's chat happening directed toward you and you want to respond by all means, um, but we're going to move on to our next item, but we really appreciate you joining us and maybe we can. Yeah, and, yeah, I'd say, I think I'm speaking for both of us. We really appreciate getting feedback from mm -hmm. you. So anything in, um, writing, um, for ideas, mm -hmm. um, you know, send them through Brian and do that. And um, we welcome doing this more than once a, once every six months. Right. Um, we, if you see something come up in the legislature, it's easy for us to jump on and do something like this. Excellent. And the same back to you. If something that you think we would want to hear about, please reach out. Uh, and you can go through Brian or to me directly, whichever is fine. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. Okay. Uh, moving on is budget. Right. Baby I, or Susan's mother died. Uh, I think that, no, that one is. Let me see. Maybe that one's the baby one. Yeah. yeah. There's two of them. Yeah. Don't get them mixed. Susan's mother. Hey, don't congratulate them all. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob. That's for Jacob. I did Susan's mom already weeks ago. Yeah. Right. Who, who was Jacob? One of our uh, writers. Employees? One of our operators. Had a baby. Yep. Okay. So he wife. didn't have a baby. His yeah. wife, uh, somebody associated with Jacob had a baby named Jacob. No. No, Jacob <laughs> works for us. We don't have a baby's name. We don't hire them back. You know. I'm child of nurse. <laughs> Early. Uh, okay, budget. All right. So, uh, looking at our current budget, um, we've got pretty good estimates for the end of FY23. Uh, one of the things that we needed, now we're in a good spot to talk about both um, what to do with the surplus. Uh, the the amount we know that we have from the end of FY22. Before we, sorry, before we jump to surplus, there was a couple of things we talked about. One was the rec committee. We still need to talk about rec committee yep. updates. We can go to the rec committee first if you like. Yeah, let's do the regular budget items first. Yes, please. Okay. So let's start on line 71 for rec revenue. Overall, the picture is kind of what we're seeing and hearing from a lot of our committees that revenue is down a little bit uh, year over year. Okay. Not a major. Beth, I know you had a, a concern about gymnastics being really low. I don't see that number having changed at all. Is that is that where we really think it's going to be? Um currently I have put out uh feelers with multiple people trying to see if I can find somebody to do gymnastics. The the one thing that I have run into is gymnastics and foot soul are one of the two programs where historically we've actually had to pay somebody to actually do the instruction part. Um, it's the uh, futsal, not always, but sometimes like gymnastics, we uh, we did have to do that um, at least once in about two years. Um, the I just have not been able to find somebody that uh, that is either a interested or b interested and wants to volunteer. 
We don't, we've always paid gymnastics instructors. Yeah. Not, not, this is not a, the last two years, this is forever. Okay. We've always paid gymnastics instructor, instructors. Okay. And even though we pay them, we still make a good chunk of change in revenue. Yeah. So if we aren't finding people who want to be paid, mm -hmm. and that's the reason our revenue is down, and we don't expect that from July of next year through June of the following year, that we're not going to find an instructor, therefore we're not going to be able to offer gymnastics, mm -hmm. that would be a good reason for revenue to be so low. Okay. But if we are planning to do that, then we should be I mean, I think we should probably be a little bit higher than 3,000 even would be my guess, um, depending on how many classes were available. Yeah. But a lot higher than $250. That's for sure. Oh, I have it as 500. Yeah, I get yeah it's 500. <laughs> but, so, even, but even so, we could go about that. The, the current year, it's over 3,000. 3,165. But if you get an instructor. A significant amount of the 3,000 came from a uh, dance instructor being found. Uh, because that was uh, on that on that line, it actually was dance and gymnastic. And both those happened during that year. And we were able to run multiple sessions. And that's why that year was, it was really good. It didn't, uh, we originally thought it was something about selling equipment, but yeah. that was not the case. Was, that line should actually uh, have dance um, on it as well, uh, because that's where um, and you, so, and mean, you don't have a, and you, line. and you don't have a dance instructor lined up either? No, I do not. I, I have plenty of hope, but I, I suppose, you know, currently right now I don't. And I was figuring that if we, if then I met with the rec committee, we can have it at the same rate that it had been, except for if you eliminate the outlier of the $3,3100, it's been the expectation of 500. Um, that was during COVID. Yeah, yeah, literally that was just COVID. Bad. I thought it was even better. Than it was forty five hundred for years, and then COVID hit and everything stopped. Um, pre COVID, it was uh, pushing five thousand regularly. So, so if we can, but if you're thinking we're going to have a gymnastics program, we should bump that revenue and number up. And if you're thinking we're not going to find somebody, and I mean by gymnastics, I mean dance and gym gymnastics, yeah. um, to the go away. Well, I don't think it. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't think it should go away um, because we have the investment of all the equipment and we have no, everything. I mean, Budgeting revenue. Oh, the revenue yeah. side. I mean, if we're not going to have an instructor, where's the revenue going to come from? It's uh, it's also you know, you know, in a feasible time frame. I've only been trying to explore for finding. I personally have only been trying to explore trying to find an instructor for the last about month and a half. Uh, I haven't, you know, and I'm going off of, you know, not only. Um, old leads and trying to connect with people that might know somebody and so on and so forth because it would be a great thing to have because otherwise in that family then everybody has to drive to ethics or they have to drive you know even further to take their kids to the program um i don't believe that stone is doing uh has gymnastics um but i'm not 100 so um I don't think so does either, but so that 30, 3,100 was from a gymnastics program and dance program, but those instructors left. Yes. Both of the instructors that we, the, the last one that we had are no longer, one is no longer in the area and one, one has moved on and just does not have time to look for it. If we think that we're going to find somebody and you're feeling pretty confident about that, I would recommend we bump the number up. Okay. 
to twelve or fifteen hundred dollars even for the revenue side. Mm -hmm. Because if we do get something established and even if it's a mid-year kind of thing, one session will hit that in theory. Well, I'm noticing that uh, what you submitted for a budget mm -hmm. a revenue of five hundred dollars for gymnastics. Yeah. And over on the expense side, you also have an expense of 500. So is that basically a money in, money out? That's what meeting with the committee was what we were, what we were. So if that's the case, if they don't bring any revenue in, they won't be spending any money. Either. We should be making money. But if she's saying either way. I'm saying if we offer it, our expenses will be less than our revenue. Well, it's not money anymore. if we're we're not sure that we're going to get it or have the program if we leave it the way it is it won't harm you don't we face that issue every year with every rec program is uncertainty i mean we don't go into a budget year knowing that every every uh program is full with a with a proper instructor do we no we can't i mean I, you know, I, we live and breathe off of volunteers and uh, volunteer coaches and, and instructors. And we try and get those, you know, lined up year after year, but mostly within like a certain time frame before the actual season starts. So, I mean, I might line them up within, you know, basketball coaches were lined up within a couple months before basketball started, but not have a fiscal year kind of situation. Yeah. So I guess I'm I'm advocating that we budget it as if it's going to be a program and we have an expense. I mean, that's part of what we pay Dean for is to is to organize that and you know hopefully he'll be successful and and we'll have a program. But I, I guess I'm with Beth on this. I would advocate bumping the bumping the revenue up and putting something less in for expense. Or at the very least have a revenue match our expense. If, if expense is it, yeah, that, it, it matches right now. So You're worst it. case happens there's no money in, no money out. Best case if there is a program will be to the good a year from now. That's what the rec committee is. So if we budget well, that way, we can't be harmed. We can only be that's, made good. That's better. not really the worst case because it's not money in, money out. If we budgeted $500 expense, it could be spent. But if there's no program, they won't spend. To buy equipment. And but if you know, budget it, it goes into the amount to be raised by taxes too. No, because it's being shown as a revenue too. Yeah, that's true. Right. So Brian, I have a question for you. I, I have the spreadsheet open that you sent out and my spreadsheet shows $250. You guys are all saying you have $500 in yours? Yep, that's correct. Yeah, yeah mine shows 250. Yeah, I have the same. So it should be 500, okay. Um, I do have a different question away from gymnastics, if that's what we're gonna settle on, fine. Um, my other question is for basketball, it says that our estimated final for the year is 2000, yet our proposed for 24 is 1250. I'm confused why we would estimate higher this year than we expect next year. Wait a minute, could you say that again? Row 80. Just cause I- Row 80, yep, in the fiscal year estimate final, yeah. 20 fiscal year 23 estimate final it says 2000 yep. for revenue and the proposed it says 1250 why would we should be 1500 yeah it's 1500 i have 1500 make sure that your spreadsheet is 50 dollars brandon no that that was yeah i guess that was but i don't care okay whatever right. whatever it says in row aj i mean column aj shouldn't it be the same as our estimated final but I think they just plugged the 2000 in there as estimated final because it was budgeted. Because previous year, they hit 1200. Well, we're in the middle of the season. 
So we should already know. Could we get that number updated? The estimated year end? We haven't done tournament. That would be additional revenue. But um, the games just started this week. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, we should. What a, that needs to be fixed. Whatever it okay. lands on, don't care. It just needs to be fixed. Gotcha. Uh, I've never played futsal before. It's Indoor soccer. soccer in the winter time. I do. Uh, I I was able to. Uh, uh, solidify somebody that is willing to run that program, and so I hope to get that up and going within the next week. That'd be good. Cool. We the, it shouldn't it should be pretty low, pretty low cost because we have all the equipment. But I just gotta make sure that I got the gym time uh, because that's live and breathe by that. Okay, are there other questions about REC? That's just revenue. Yeah. Expenses begin on line 275. Why is there a phone that didn't used to have anything on it? Where? Uh, 280. Yeah, I asked Brian about that. Why the phone in my lid was still a line that was in the in there. Um, they could be removed. They've never had anything here. For yeah, we can remove them. So, what's the difference between these spreadsheets? Why do we have different well, spreadsheets? Well, isn't there? Mileage would be reimbursement of mileage, right? It would be, but we're covering that under general office. Okay. Is that that gets back to the accuracy conversations we've had? But I guess if we're gonna do it that way, we should remove those two items. I would, I would just point out that we paid um, Lisa. Cruise, I don't know, 250 bucks or so to detail her car because she had never submitted any mileage claims. Um, and she felt that there was, you know, wear and tear in our vehicle. I, if Dean isn't um, submitting for mileage, I encourage him to do so because I, for one, will vote against um, paying for anybody's car being detailed if I, they haven't. I am, I am <laughs> right. I, but but Brian was saying that that doesn't show up in the rec committee's expense. It shows up uh, in the general office expense. Gotcha. Yeah, and I, I tend to agree that that line item should stay in and that that's where it should be, you know, where the expense should be shown. But that's just me. Well, I thought I would have fought a losing battle there. I'd like it to stay. Well, I'm with you, Evan. Huh? And then she put some money for it on the budget. Right, I was just going to ask. Well, we can move the seven hundred. The board wants to put in there, and we can take some. Well, I guess there's no mileage reimbursement under general offices, there. There is. There is. Well, I got to find that. It is. Skipped over it. It's more. Line two hundred nine. So Duncan, if we reduced the mileage, well, it's only four hundred dollars. It's only four hundred bucks. I and our actuals haven't been close to that before. Right. So it's probably fine. But do we add one hundred and fifty for mileage under rec? I I don't think we're remaining. We took one hundred and fifty out yeah. of. Take it out one and put it in the other. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Okay. Are you in agreement with that, Mark and Beth? Sure. So line 209 goes from 400 to 250. We don't live in that large town. I shouldn't have that thing in mind. <laughs> and then line 
279 goes to 150. If we walk and we left money. Budgeted, proposed. Yeah. We can get a shoe in there. Duncan, it's not on your sheet, but line 284 has $150 in it. 284? Yep. Yeah, toddler playground. Uh, facilities maintenance, do we know where we're planning to do work because that's going up. That's a big one too. A uh, significant amount of work will be continuing on Bolt at uh, Old Mill Park. And I think. What at Old Mill Park? Uh, facilities maintenance and continuing grounds maintenance on, on Old Mill Park. So it's grounds on your facility. Yeah. Was this where the spigot yeah, I don't understand what you're referring to. Evan had asked why there was an increase next year for uh, facilities maintenance. I understand that. What about no, Old Mill Park? Uh, can I ask you to help fill in specifically what's going on? Um, yeah, well, we're within the, we still have to continue to fill a lot of work on the uh, along the fields. Uh, we're gaining them back to uh, sustainability um, because of uh, two of the soccer fields that just uh, were deteriorated by the damage there the year before that we that we were able to recover partly. Uh, the other thing is we now have a new playground, um, and we need to. Um, we're looking into also using the kiosk area um, where the bathroom is. Uh, in a better capacity, um, slowly trying to use that. Maybe uh, the, the original vision was to have concessions available in a small area, and there's things that need to be uh, done there to make that use um, now that there's power to the building. Um, and um, we're biggest biggest chunk is a lot of it is, is going to the actual fields and, and grounds and the sports fields and, and doing the work that needs to be done for those. Um, I've also, you know, again, coming into what I know, what the plan is for next year. Um, I think that covers about everything, but um, we do have an outlier of whether those, now that we have the new playground, whether the swing sets that are there are going to be allowed uh, and suitable to stay um, just because of where their condition is at. Um, so that might be something that we might, um, that we might have to look at and explore. That would be what I, what I know at this point is the plan. Thank you. Does this number cover mowing or no. mowing somewhere it else? Also, different line item. Also, does cover a big chunk of that, covers all the rentals for all the quarter bodies, except for two months where Tuesday Night Live covers the cost. We cover, and I just got the latest bill from Rosemary, um, and I do believe it was for just two portalettes for one month was the total of. $270. Um, so one handicap and one regular. Um, the realization is that we have one that's in that kiosk at Old Mill Park right next to the bike trail that stays there year round. We have the one down at Legion Field that stays there year round. And then, of course, we increase it to a high, uh, to a handicap one on Legion Field. And I've actually even talked about uh, adding one more to Old Mill Park because of where the kiosk is, it's great for the bike trail and for those two lower soccer fields and the lower baseball field. But now that we have a new playground, it would be nice to have one that's towards that and also for soccer practices and soccer tournaments because I had to end up ordering several extra for the tournament that we have because we wouldn't have a so, so a big chunk of facility budget is eaten by quarter bodies. That's, uh, that's why we actually went for an increase of 1500 
so that we would be able to cover part of the portal that cost and 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 then still have some 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 left over to do some work that we need to do. Um, but yes, I mean portal that are but we need them. But it's also under our facility budget. That is true. I'm just going to tell you at a high level, I'm actually really concerned about REC at a high level because um, expenses compared to revenue are going in the wrong direction. Expenses are going pretty significantly up and revenue is going pretty significantly down. Uh, and part of proposing the REC coordinator position, however many years ago it was, five, four, four or five years ago, I guess now was that um, trying to make these budget lines net zero. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I'm, I mean, I actually know this stuff pretty well because I did it for a long time. Oh, yeah. um, and I'm really worried about it because I think there are ways to bring revenue in. Mm -hmm. And I think there are ways to reduce expenses too. Um, and I hear you on the porta potties, they're a pain. I get it. Um, but they don't make up $27,000 worth of expense. No, they do not. But uh, as a person that, you know, is uh, fresh and new to this position, I get I'm it. open to any suggestions or anything that we could, that we could do to, to adjust, but also from talking with the rec committee, we've been doing cuts for the last four years, according to the information and the story that I have. So, but um, I am I am very open to hearing from anyone to to bring back. I hear all the time from when I go to the community, you know, different things, luminary walk. Everybody talks to me about the old days of rec and you know, and how they had like big groups of people all working together to pull things off and but I make the comment Dean not to like reminisce about the old days I just make the comment to like have a critical eye on revenue specifically mm -hmm. because I agree that most of these expenses are probably pretty true but I think that there's lots of opportunity for revenue and how do we prioritize those high revenue items yeah. and deprioritize some other things to help balance this out a little bit. Yeah. Um, Casey? No, uh, just a, an aside, accounting-wise, clarity-wise, would it be helpful um, to separate contracted services from buildings and ground expenses? Uh, just because you, then you see which was which. Well, I mean, we can see it because they're all right. in the individual line items, but I hear your point. Yeah. yeah. Because you're not going to get revenue from buildings and grounds ever, right? <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, right. you easy. could, we, which we could and should. I we know. kind of went the wrong way with earlier this year. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's good comments. Thanks, Evan. We're a coin collector at the uh, portal. <laughs> you do have to pay. I mean, in a lot of airports and train stations around the world, you do have to pay to use the bathroom. Seriously? Seriously. Yeah, I'll take a picture next time. Yeah, <laughs> paying would be women for starters. Yeah. So, yeah. so equity point. Yes, um, Duncan. I think I heard Dean say um year round porta potty at Le at Legion Field. Um I think at the last board meeting, I questioned whether or not we needed to leave that up and Brian was going to look into having it removed. Um, what's the status of that? Is is there a feeling of the rec committee that that porta potty should be there on a, on a year round basis? And if so, what's the justification for it? Uh, the justification is due to basically solidifying the skate rink. We have that new liner and the skate rings up and it gives community members a an ability to, to use the uh, use the skate rink. <laughs> the it's skate there. rink's not running yet. I have to run for the woods. But to Duncan's point, the skate rink 
So from the time Tuesday Night Live ends to the skate rink being put up, there are, well, at this point, five months, four months in between. Why are we paying the cost for those four months? And we don't have the skate rink yet, so they could deliver it when we have it. Right. Um, I could look into that. Um, I was seeing how it, it's easier to have them come over with it and then bring it. From it's not easier. It doesn't matter what they, they're a service but, provider. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I could look into that. So. Did you ever do anything with that, Brian? I, Is it still there? I believe it's still there. Uh, oh, yeah. I'd refer to it to being we've had the rec coordinator rec contact for yeah. the portal left provider because we're going before we were having four or five yeah, different so people issues. calling them. Yep. Okay. So, Dean, if you don't mind, that would be lovely. Although now it's time for this case to be but maybe not. But yeah, if we don't get no, cold weather, perhaps in, not. In March, the, the skate rink will go out and they won't need to be back there again until July. So the Tuesday on the month. Yeah. And yeah. not to bring up the good old days, but there never was a porta potty there when there was a skating rink there before. So, well, there wasn't a pizza oven there either. And then now there's that, and you have that community gathering. I think that we need to be careful when we talk about things like that, like for me personally, because like if we're talking about community oven, all for it, yeah. but they have their own budget. And yeah. if they want to for specific events, if they want to portal it, they would have a budget for that. Kind of like Tuesday night live. But anyway, okay, I think we've derailed enough. We should keep moving. Um thanks Dean for the updates. Yeah. And if you don't mind, like just you know, bringing the comments about revenue very specifically back. That would be lovely. Yeah. Um, All right. So our big picture with the budget right now, um, you know, we've got a pretty good idea of where we're going to end up. Can I can I interject? What page you? Uh, sure, go ahead, Duncan. So I, I had sent out an email earlier with some specific line item questions. I never got any any responses back on. Can I can we go through those? I, I can guide yeah, you to each go line item. Yep, go ahead. Okay, so the first one was uh line forty eight. Um well the first one the first one really goes back to a question that Eben had early on. And that was whether or not we should make any changes to the pilot figure. And that's line 29. I The copy that I had was in at 440,000. Is is that the right number, Brian? That is. Okay. And is, is there any reason that we would want to think about, you know, either increasing or decreasing that, especially based on our conversation with Bridge Westman tonight? Sounds like not this year. That's what okay. I took from Rich's comment. All right, I'm 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 happy with that. Okay. Eben, you're the one that made the initial. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think for an accurate budget, it would be good to move it up, but there's nothing wrong with being conservative on the revenue side. You could probably move it up 10,000 and still be well within what we got last year or the current. That's year. what I brought up on our meeting on the it's the December. I, I support having it on that. I mean, well, that's why I'm raising it again. For right. Thank you. Let's 10, do it. 10, 10, okay, uh, we already have consensus. 450 it is. Okay. Thank you, um, all right. Um, the next one is line 48. We had talked about that's money uh, <clears throat> in from the restricted fund for the cost of records preservation. I thought we had talked about putting some money in that line item as a reserve in. There currently isn't anything in there. Um, I would recommend that we have an equal an equal amount um, in as, ex as revenue and out as expense, but that's just me. Do you have a suggestion yes. of the amount? 
Well, we the the expense amount was seventy five hundred. Um, I forget what line that's on, but um, it's uh, funny I, because I, on line forty eight in the revenue back in the December thirteenth, uh, we had thirty five hundred for revenue. Yeah. Sorry, what is the line you said again for? Well, well we had decided on 3,500. Yeah, yeah, but it never made it into Brian's spreadsheet. So if you look at if you look at the spreadsheet right now under line 48, there's nothing in there. Yep, you're right. Thank I you. I gotcha. I called that one out too. Yep. What was the expense equivalent to that line? I believe it's 7,500. Am I right, Brian? I had 3,500 from our, our December 13th. Yeah, 7,500. For the expense or the revenue? Revenue. Okay. Uh, that's that's but, what I remember we talked about. I think the expense is 7,500. I'm, yeah. I'm suggesting that because of the nature of the way that reserve fund is structured, mm -hmm. that it's not actually taxpayer money that goes into that at all. It's recording <clears throat> money that goes in that the two numbers should be equal. But I'm if we want to leave it at 3,500, I'm okay with that. My main point is there needs to be some figure under revenue in. To show it coming in from the reserve fund. To show something yeah. coming in from the reserve. It looks like if this is accurate, we got 20,000 in the reserve fund, right? That's what we could afford to, right? And Rosemary has pointed out that we're going to need new roller shelving um, sometime in the fairly near future. Um, that that probably can come from that reserve fund because the wording of that is, oh, it's a little bit nebulous, but it talks about preservation, um, protection, conservation, and storage of records. So the end storage probably would allow the board to spend that money on um, roller shelving. Uh, roller shelving probably would also be a, a proper item for, you know, the capital buildings, uh, grounds and buildings fund too. So do we want to settle on 7,500 for both or 35? I think 75 uh, for both. 30, 75 for both, fine. Okay. Sorry, Rosemary. What'd you say, Rosemary? Is that what you said? 75. Okay. It's more than you good with that, Rosemary? Preserve a book. Yeah, she's good with that. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, let me see. My next one, I believe, was <clears throat> line one twenty one. Um, I put in a figure of one hundred and thirty k from the surplus. We can we can talk about that later. Line one fifty nine. Um, that is the Lister contracted expense. It's in there right now at 24K. I, I mean, at 25K, I, I think we could easily drop that to 24. It's not, a, you know, it's not a big difference, but thousand bucks. I have a note on this one, Duncan, and it says that assuming $60 per hour at eight hours per week. So I believe that's where that number came from. It is, and it probably came from the spreadsheet that I worked up, you know, as well. But I, you know, I, I, that that twenty five k is allowing a little bit of extra money um, than we probably need. So, totally up to you guys. I'm I'm okay with leaving it at twenty five. What we what was, you want to lower it to? Twenty four. Twenty four. Lowering it by a thousand. Leave it at twenty five. We already have. Uh, yeah, we don't have anything under in under Lister mileage, and and I think my suggestion was going to be to take a thousand out of here and put it under Lister mileage because we didn't budget anything for Lister mileage. But I can I can live with it either way. Yeah, let's keep it where it is. Yep. Okay. Next. Okay. Um, line. Yeah, two thirteen is the records preservation line. Uh, line 234, um, we put 7,000 in there kind of as a placeholder for um, work on the Holcomb House. Um, depending on what we end up doing with our surplus and whether we dedicate anything to that, 
the 7,000 is not really, it's not really indicative of anything. It was just a number that was put in there to increase the potential number. I'd be okay with lowering that back to the original budgeted 3,000 if we were to dedicate some of our surplus and put it into the capital buildings and reserve funds so that you know the improvements necessary to the historical society building and library and other town buildings you know could come out of the um buildings and grounds reserve fund so that's a topic of discussion i guess Uh, to some degree, I guess that goes to where Brian wants to take the discussion over how we how we allocate our um, surplus funds. Well, regardless, oh, how do I want to allocate? Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. So, do we want to lower that to three thousand for now? Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, I, I'm I'm reluctant to say yes without <laughs> without. <laughs> but, Let's hold that. Let's put a pin in that. Can you put that on your list to put a pin in? Yep. Duncan, and then once we have this surplus, then we can yep. readdress. Yep. Yes. Then my next one is line three eleven. Um, the proposal of seventeen thousand two hundred. Uh, this is the skate park funding, and I think, um, I think Casey was thinking that we might dedicate some amount of ARPA funds to that. Um, to the best of my knowledge, we haven't done that, so I wonder if that number should be whatever the number would be minus ARPA funds. That doesn't include ARPA. Yeah. That is includes planned grant expenses, and that's specifically on grants that we've already applied for and expect to receive. So it does not include ARPA. I think that was for the Casey's current Casey's here, year. shaking her head yes. No, he's on 311, and, but I don't think you updated that, Duncan, because it's 6,000. No, seventeen two. What line? I had in in the spreadsheet that I'm looking at, which is the one I downloaded today from Brian. It's seventeen two. One we have is six thousand. I'm with Duncan. Okay. The paper right, is well, different I'll, electronic. I'll change mine. Which one's correct? correct. The paper copy is correct. The, the six thousand is correct. Okay. Yeah, Casey's saying no ARPA. Yeah, at our. Okay. All right, I got it. Thank you. At our um, meeting on the thirteenth, we had Brian follow up with it. He worked with Casey and came down to this. Lines three forty four and three forty five. That's probably the same question that you had, Evan, earlier on the amount of increases for the salaries. Um. And the explanation is probably the same. So, most likely, it's funny that they don't match up exactly. But yeah, I, I, I understand why it might not. So I, we don't have to go there, I guess. Um, line three sixty six. I guess this is my last one, really. Um, I was thinking from past board meetings that the contract that we have with Pike for paving is going to be completed in this fiscal year's budget. Is that correct, Brian? That's our expectation. Uh, we should be early in the year for Pike, meeting this fiscal year. All right, so yeah. if that is correct, my recommendation is that under year end, estimated year end paving, we put in either the contracted price or a sum equal to the 100,000 that was budgeted plus the amount that is in dedicated, uh, a, a dedicated reserve. And that amount is I think 163,680. And if we do that, it seems to me that we need to bring in 163, 680 as revenue somewhere so that it ends up being neutral. Yes, that's the way it should be this way. I would probably be more accurate. Be showing the contracted amount, yeah. but then under revenue side, it would be. The net effect has been zilch, but it'd be more transparent. Right, yeah. And that under revenue is. 
We might have to create a new line. Rosemary, are you still there? Yes. What would be the best way to show that as revenue coming in from the, because the, the paving reserve is actually just something that the board set aside as a dedicated fund. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a special reserve fund. What would be the best way to show that what if it was coming in to into the budget? It's a one-time thing. Yeah, you could wow. just lay us in the fund. Well, oh, just, can... just to throw this out there, um, you know, even if we do a paving project every two years, this is probably how it should be done in the future. So it should almost be shown as income from, you know, like the highway restricted fund is rev highway restricted fund. You could do it that way. Because like, it's not going to be able, doing a one-time thing like this under miscellaneous when you know you're going to be paving it at some point. It's a little... But usually we don't combine two years. Well, we, we usually do combine years. two years, but we... The timing is where we can do it. We, we usually obligate and yeah. spend some of the money up front to start the contract and then finish in the next year's budget. That didn't work out this year because we couldn't get them here right. anywhere near the close of the previous year. You know, we obligated the money last year, but and we still haven't started the work. We can do it. Either way, I mean, as long as it's somewhere so that you can show that money's coming in and going out, it doesn't matter how we do it. You want to make a good line on it. Do people agree, though, basically, that the year to date should equal either the contracted amount or 163,680 plus 100,000, 263,680? Yeah, sounds great to me. And Rosemary is agreeing. Yes. Yeah, so the spend, can you get the spend what the contracted amount is? And is it too much to add a line on the revenue no. side where the other reserve funds are coming in to show? I think it's too much, and I don't think you've got... I don't think we've got a better... I don't think we've got a better way of showing it. So I think, yeah, new line is probably going to be what's appropriate. It's not really highway restricted fund. No. Yeah, it's it's a it's a reservation or a dedication, and that's how you show it, Rosemary, in your listing. Yep. As being reserved or dedicated, but it's not a reserve fund as it, a standalone reserve fund. So and it might be wise to have it worded so it could be used for something else too. Because occasionally we've had to do this. Like I think the uh, welcome center didn't we have to carry money over from one fiscal year to the next? Is a dedicated funds. Yeah, and Eric, that's a good point because that's a big difference between a reserve fund and a reservation or dedication of funds. If you're reserving or dedicating funds you the select board has the legal authority to change the purpose of that dedication with a reserve fund you don't you can only spend the money absent voter approval to do otherwise you can only spend the money on what the reserve fund was originally approved for right but as this does occasionally happen what i was suggesting was having the wording where it could be used in any application. Yes, I, I agree with I, I agree with what you're saying. Okay. So that's something that it's just gonna have to be updated then. Yeah. I, did we provide clear direction on the you haven't said much about this topic, so I assume you're I'm placing. I am peaceful. I don't like putting it in miscellaneous. I think we, I think a separate line item is where we're headed and what we should do. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys got that one. I think okay. that I'm just going to move us backwards. Sorry, but uh, to line 221 and 222. Uh, sorry, not 222. To line 222 and 223. 
are both heat related, propane related items. And we have calculations to the right. For some reason, these changed in the latest. Yeah, they did change in the latest. They should be uh, $9,227. On the first line, and that's two twenty. Two twenty-two should be nine thousand two hundred and twenty-seven dollars. For the fiscal year twenty-four, yep. That's Based sweet. on the rates we have listed. Fantastic. And the other is. I'm sorry, Beth. Can you <laughs> can you give that to me again? Line two twenty-two. Line 222 for heat should be $9,227. So I've got 4,500 in the spreadsheet that I've got. Is that what you had before? Yeah, that's what, no, that's what is in the current spreadsheet as well. It's not what we talked about last time though. And it needs to be $9,227. Okay. And the line right behind wow. it, one. Did our gallon rate change? This is based on our new contracted prices. If our contracted prices flow. What? Because we signed this. Look at the note right here. Early. This note right here. Yeah. I'm recalculating them right now. They're right here. This is this one. 700 gallons at $1.61 plus $1,800 at Four dollars and fifty cents gotcha. is nine thousand two hundred twenty-seven dollars. The one right behind it, using the formula, is seven thousand eight hundred and nineteen dollars. Well, so yeah. if those are the wrong gallons and everything, that's not what we left our last meeting talking about. The, those gallons re reflect the no longer term. That reflects. All of the conversation we had about heating at our last conversation at our last meeting. So I can't oh. speak to the details, but two twenty. I mean, without tenants upstairs. No, no. Um, oh, that's why we edited it on the thirteenth. We had asked Brian to recalculate those numbers. Yep. And on the nineteenth, they were presented as what we have today. On the 19th, they were presented as what we have today. Yeah. Oh, I missed a spreadsheet. Okay. All I didn't compare all of all of our spreadsheets, but apparently I'll check the calculations. Thank you. Okay. So we, do we think the 4,500 is correct? I think it is. I think that the note describing the totals is probably where the error is now. Okay. Where's the final? Where's the 45? Cool. Okay, so we're not going to adjust those yet. No, I'll okay. circle back and find out where the error is, whether it's the description right. or the dollars. Right. To your credit, Beth, I had picked up on the same same items, and I wasn't going to I wasn't going to raise the issue because I was confused. <laughs> you probably did the same things in very different ways. Is my guess. Well, and, and uh, two twenty three specifically. <laughs> It's going to be a difficult one. But we already had this conversation last meeting. So I think if Brian just goes back and checks the conversation last meeting. And I'm yeah, mostly going to happen. check how did I arrive at the numbers that are in here. Yeah. I think that. Okay. You also need to check the meeting minutes. It's I important because we talk. Because it should be 30% of last year's usage. All right. 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 Okay. Um, um, what else did you have? Sorry. That's it. That's well, we're in this section. I'm trying not to jump around. Uh, line 227. We had said that we would discuss it more. Um, maybe it's the appropriate time. Maybe it's not. Are we thinking of trying to span two fiscal years to put a fence in on Grove Cemetery? We had 6,000 from last year, largely in part the Duncan's work, we haven't spent anything at all. Mm -hmm. And we have 6,000 allocated for this year. And I believe that fence was 11,000 and change was the cheaper option. That's the right ballpark. I don't remember the contract off the top of my head. Yeah. 
all part. I just want to make sure we with the don't lose sight of it needs to have a fence. The current year six thousand that we virtually haven't spent any of it yet. Would that get us two sides done? Or would they break it up like that? I don't know if it, I don't know what would be cheaper about going to something like Evan's proposal of uh, doing two sides now, like having them out once, do all four sides, and we pay them, you know, in June, half in June and half in July. Yeah. That's or, what I was talking about. Like you're saying, come out, do two, we'll pay you. And then later, come out, do the other two, and we'll pay you then. I don't know if they'd be willing to. It's okay, if we went with that proposal, the only problem is for the next year and a half, there would not be any stone maintenance work. Maintenance done. Correct. There, there would be. We're already behind on that. We never catch up. That would just put us that much further. Unless we up that 6,000 something, a little more to try to get some stone work done as well as get the pipes done. I mean, historically speaking, on that line, yeah, we haven't spent it. Our spend's pretty low. So if we bumped that from 6,000 to 7,500, then I might be able to get us our fence and. You know, Try to catch up on the solar needs. Finding somebody who really works is difficult. Yeah. That's the other problem. Finding somebody who really works. That is, that is a problem. And Eric, you will remember that it wasn't that long ago that the town was budgeting $10,000 a year for that category. And you probably dropped it because you couldn't find people uh, you know, to, to do the work. Um, well, and that, also, you know that is still a problem, but your your point is is accurate that um, you know if we if we budget just the six, we aren't going to be catching up on stones. And there, every year I go into the cemeteries and more stones have fallen over. Would you be comfortable budgeting seventy five hundred? What about you, Duncan? Uh, I'm. Yeah, I'm 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 good with that. Yep. You mark you back. Okay. What line was it, Eben? Uh it's two twenty seven. We're just bumping that from six thousand to seventy five hundred, and hoping that we can get a fence in the Grove Cemetery this year. I know that when we had the neighbors in, they talked about even being willing to do some of the work. I, I'm i certainly not opposed to the idea of, you know, either circulating another RFP or, you know, coming up with some other way to do that other than a, you know, a fencing contractor to, to do that work. It seems to me that there's a lot of people in the community that are more than capable of digging a hole and putting a fence post in and that we could I probably mean, get the work done. I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a conversation for another meeting. I yes, it is. Jerry Wise, that would be the smart move. What we would talk okay, what's next, Duncan? What's on the list next? I think we covered my list. Okay. All right, um, Ryan. Yeah, on list. Oh, yeah. yeah, jumping around, right? Um, in the copy that we have, the animal control expense and health officer expense are back down. Uh, maybe that's part of a larger conversation, but I thought in our previous meeting, this would be uh, 241 and 242. Oh, I guess we never bumped those up. We, I think. We did, though. No, I don't have any. We're looking at pay. And pay for them is one thirty one and one thirty two. Wait, what? Oh, am I on the wrong ones? There's expense. Yeah, there's two categories. Oh, there's expense. Those are expenses oh, incurred. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. My bad. Is it one thirty one? One thirty one and one thirty two. You're both in at forty five hundred right now. Yes. 
And I, I sent you a draft on what the uh, <laughs> base schedule, a workable base schedule will be. Board obviously has to approve any changes in pay before it takes effect, but on estimate, we should be able to afford that base scale with these figures. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have anything on your list, Mark? I have one that we already talked about. Economic developer was the other thing on Duncan's list. We need to figure out what we're going to do about it. Um, but yeah, update this on. Don't have enough to I thought we were going to put that in under a salary for Rex, or we didn't have it economic development. I don't recall I don't us we, having a settled. Yeah, we definitely didn't settle. I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm pretty sure we didn't settle. But we should budget somebody for we need to do one of two things. We either need to budget something or we need to put another article on our ballot. This, or the or article third on time expense. Yeah, but typically we would put it out as an article for a new position. And if the voters approved it, then it's rolled into. But we didn't put it on the article as a position. We put it on the article as economic development generically. Yeah, because we didn't know if we were going to be able to get a person or right. what. So should we put it out? Which was very wise of us. In the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we put it out as an article for a position this year? Well, I think we should talk about whether or not we should do that. I That's part of why articles are on here, actually. One of okay, a couple of so reasons. A future conversation. Yep. Um, are we back to it's a tonight conversation, but yeah. yeah, good. Uh back to uh oh, 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 366. I do think we should bump that by five thousand. What is it? Paving blacktop capital. We're severely underfunding this, but we can afford a bond to catch up what it should probably be. So I'm proposing a five thousand dollar increase. What line item, Evan? Uh three sixty six. We already we're on this for <laughs> yeah. We're... Fine. So from a hundred to hundred and five. I would be supportive of that if everybody else is. Fine. It used to be higher. The 100 is a reduction. So, let that know, Brian. 366 goes to 105. Yep. All right. Are there any more line items that we want to discuss? Uh, Eric? Enough of that. No, I already said mine. I told you I didn't have anything. I know. Okay. It's okay. I'm getting all cranky. Go ahead, Brian. All right. One of the big things that I want to accomplish is the, the discussion about how to handle uh, about what we're doing with our, our surpluses uh, that we have, you know, some amount of money that we can. Uh, Let's see what's in here. We have an estimated what page? It's line 471 is where we have our total estimated uh, cash on hand balance at the end of this fiscal year. And Duncan, I don't see it on our sheet. It's two hundred and nine thousand uh, five hundred and forty-seven dollars and ninety-seven cents. That uh, so there's two oh five. Uh, the the spreadsheet that Rosemary handed out in September, the total was two oh five, two eighty-five, five. 52 and Brian is adding to that 
the estimated year end balance for 23, fiscal 23. Is that correct, Brian? That's correct. Okay. And I just put the number in the chat. How long has it taken us to get to 205 a year? Um, it 4,000 yeah, bucks a year, that's a lot of years. <laughs> well, it changes from year to year, Mark. I, I'm sure it does. It, you know, just seeing that we that we have a 4,000 plus, plus balance this year, we're carrying 205. So it must change dramatically. We have considerably more than 4,000. Well, but we will probably end with a greater surplus than $4,000. We have, we try to be okay. relatively conservative with where we expect revenue and surplus to go for the end of the current year. We would be in a very bad position if we erred on the other side and ended up with a deficit at the I end. I understand year. that. It's very line I'm not seeing the other I'm just seeing the four. four yeah, thousand. but that is basically like you know all these expenses that we said year end is going to be thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. When that year end comes in at eleven thousand, there's actually going to be twenty thousand more in there. And if worst case scenario, honestly, is I think Rosemary, you can tell me like shut up. Totally fine. <laughs> but I think if we got to a point where we ended our year and we were pretty darn close, we might just hold an invoice or two. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm. I'm not comfortable with just four thousand bucks with, with this kind of budget that we have. But I'm going to trust that. I mean, it seems like a half a million dollar budget. We better have more than four thousand dollars plus. Well, the the two oh five is a pretty good number. We can be we well, can be pretty I, sure. I mean, I just did, I, what I didn't know is how how long did it take us to get to two oh five? It it really was one year. One year. I didn't lie to you. I because we're this four thousand is an estimate. So uh, okay. we estimate a little conservatively conservatively on the revenue side and a little bit more liberal on the expense side. side. So which it, I which I like the whole but, class. But I would still question that we only anticipate having four thousand right now, the estimate. And that number just changed because Evan just added five thousand expense, so we're in the whole. Thing. Uh, no, that's, no, well, that's that's, little, that, that's really that's to the budget. That that number did not change. Mark, we got happy that we do. I do have I do I have one thing that could like, change that, that number. Uh, yes, well. uh, I'm sorry, Duncan. What did you say? I do have one item that I did have on my list that I missed um, that could change the number. Um, and that is um, the amount we we added we added money in from the reserve fund for the records preservation, correct? Um, but line two thirteen is currently showing having spent seventy five hundred by the end of the year. So my question to Rosemary would be. A, do you think we will actually spend seventy five hundred dollars between now and the end of the year on records preservation? And if so, we yes. do, yes. Oh, is that? yes. So if if we do, should we bring in any money from the reserve fund to offset that for this year? For this year, yeah, we could current year. Yes. Do we have that? I mean, do we have that? Well, we have a reserve it? fund, but we haven't allocated it. No, I understand, but we okay. So in this uh, estimated final for fiscal year twenty three, we have not allocated from reserve. Correct. To net that. Why would we, Why would we do that now? If we were looking like we we're going to come into a red situation, yeah, I can see where we would pull money in from a reserve fund. But if we're thinking we're going to end the year in a positive, why would we do it at this point? To make the positive number bigger. That's the only reason. For 
for Mark's point about having a little cushion in our expectation. Which we would have that ability as we got towards the end of the fiscal year if we needed it. If we needed it. But, but it almost sounds like we're trying to take money out of the reserve fund to get it into our estimated cash on hand so we can use it, apply it to a different place. Right. All right. It's kind of, it's not really right. the intent. Well, I mean, the records preservation mm -hmm. is paid for, yep. right? And if it was used for records preservation, it would just be that. And we wouldn't be using that money for something else. We would be using money for what it's for and wherever else there was flop would be. Right. Yeah. But I get the image thing that you're talking about. I would well, break it in this year. Yeah. I mean, I hear your image thing too, but that's not really the point. The point is we have a reserve fund for this purpose and we're applying it for this purpose on uh, its own and should, separately. We should have done that with the proposed budget last year for the right. regular showing. Right. I mean, Unless we still we need can. To do it this year. It's I not gotcha. illegal or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we get into a deficit area, which, you know, we're very, very close, $4,000, that could easily go one way or the other. Um, if we did get into a deficit, this uh, situation, I would be the first one advocating for taking that reserve money in. Right. I just wouldn't do it yet. Yeah. I'm with Eric. Fair enough. I'm okay either way. Okay, good. Okay. So we have an estimated cash on hand balance of $209,574.97. Again, that's a little bit at, for the estimated year end of FY23. The bulk of it is coming from uh, the balance left over from FY22. The well, so that's what I was actually getting at in my whole question. Is yeah. How much are we moving from here? Isn't this? It's usually but yeah, maybe. over a hundred thousand is typical. The bulk of it's going from taxes, isn't it? Um, but it's not. Is this atypical? This four thousand two hundred fifty-one. No, not really. We try to, like like we said, we try to have a pretty conservative estimate at this okay. time of what the year is going to end oh, six months. Well, from the loan well, tax due is like a liability. It's not cash on okay. hand. I know, but it's what well, it takes up that total. But yeah, crazy. I know we had this conversation last yeah. year. But they yeah. say we all, we break. usually collect all of it. Right. Um, I actually did change the estimated year end by 10,000. You did? Up or down? <laughs> uh, because we you can. The pilot we had decided to increase the pilot and the other by seven thousand on something else. I don't have regardless, a, I don't really oh, like the that. preservation record preservation bringing in that in. I don't have a pilot change for the the yeah. end of this year, the end of FY twenty. Yeah, you just said it. Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry. I mean, well yeah. no, that in a month apparently it sounds like maybe. I yeah, you're right. Because that was budget. Oh, that was yeah. yeah. That's Sorry. Yeah. See, Are Mark? you guys working intentionally to confuse me, or <laughs> is this yeah? Is this the norm? We <laughs> practice <laughs> going from year to year. We figured if yeah, we flip, sure it was me last if we year, flip like, this page, that uh, page. This <laughs> Mark, do sweat it. The first year <laughs> you do the budget, it's like. It is confusing. <laughs> so this page, I'm pretty sure that Eric and Rosemary told me like many, many times that the available uncommitted uh, cash balance isn't actually cash. <laughs> I mean, like, like at least five times. <laughs> Just sort of green. It's a, right. it's, a, yeah. it's a liability plus. And then what is the delinquent tax? Tell me, give me more detail about that. That's the hope. One hundred forty-one thousand. Is that the whole part that they're right? the generally they pay that? That's the liability. Yeah, yeah. we are owed that much money. I we are I understand. committed to use that money. 
And where does it sugar out at the end of the day? It's not with the 205. Is that, it's not cash on hand, it's just, but if we actually it's, get it. It's, it's cash done, on hand when we get it. Like it's, it's. We, so it's another case of being But it's a percentage. It's yeah. Anticipated oh, really. cash on hand. It right. means the town can never go bankrupt, Mark. Good. It, it's also an effect of if people pay their delinquent taxes <laughs> after the year is closed, we've already had to balance out that year. So. And that's a rolling every year. Right. Right. And it's probably higher this year than normal. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit lower. I thought, I thought we had like 255 last year or something. Really? Last year, didn't we have like 255 last year or something? Okay. Oh, you could tell right there. Thanks. For right. reserve 197. Oh, yeah, there you go. From cash on hand. But we also had left over 64. So we have, we can use the money in a number of different ways. The traditional way that we've used the money has been to uh, dedicate a certain amount of that surplus as a straight return to the taxpayer, which lowers the amount that needs to be raised by taxes. Just to get it started, I put in uh, an amount, I picked 125000 where did you put that amount again? Oh, right now. It's, 475. it's on line 475. It is. It also appears in our budget calculation on the line. The pink one. 121. 121, thank you. Yeah. Let's go off around there, sorry. Red is mine. The risk with this is that number is used to set the tax rate. So if there was a change, you know, if we did have uh, something that ate up the expected surplus, we would then have set a tax rate that was lower than we anticipated. It seems conservative to me in 125. I mean, if we're really running around with 209, we should come in. That's a fair discussion for the board. I'm really just trying to give you the context of if we spend or apply about half of it to reducing taxes. Right. Because once this gets approved by the voters, that is a locked and it's locked. No, I understand. The that. other the other places we put the rest of it, we have to show where all of it's gonna go. And the other places we can move it around a little bit if it turns out to be not that much more. Well, I'm confused. What's not that much more than 100 grand? Well, let's say the 205 yeah. or 209 actually came in at 190. It would be yeah. short like $20,000. Right. If we uh, had allocated, you know, 20,000 to the buildings and grounds fund, reserve fund, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to apply that. Because we don't have it. Okay. But, but the, the amount to reduce taxes. No, that's I, I, and I'm peace. I'm peaceful with 125. Yeah. I just want to wrap my mind around 209. Is it safe for me to say 209 plus some amount of delinquent taxes are going to roll? No. No, no, no. no. The 101,000 no. is part of the 209. So do, do you guys have the spreadsheet that Rosemary handed out back in September? The 141 in the six. If you don't, you should. The, the 64 we have on the end. I can't hear everything. Oh, we'll on the back of our that, that budget, at the bottom of it, actually, for you, uh, that's what we're looking at to talk this about. This is this. We're making this. I was thinking Mark's this. getting it. He got it. This. That was a big number. That would have been 330 something. And I would say, yeah, 135. Wait. Now I feel more nervous. What? The only number that's really fairly solid of that 209 is the 205,286 that is in Rosemary's. 
cash on hand report from 2022. Yeah. I will point out that, that that's includes, not in. That includes delinquent taxes, so it's not, it's. In her accounting, that it is cash on hand, but you're right. That's in the checkbook. It's but that's cool. that's how the it's like a semi it's a quasi it. solid state. Uh, uh, Kate, uh, hold on a second, Casey. Um, is it is it possible to use part of the uh, part of that money for possible grant match? I.e., it's not specified that it's like for building the ground or a purpose, but it's identified as possible grant match for other economic development costs. If it was shown to the voters, yeah. if it was shown to the voters and approved by the voters, it could be used to buy trash cans if, we were, if that's what they wanted. You know? Yep. It could be used for any grant match, build a grid, whatever. And then it could be applied to yeah. It is what the voters have to say. Right. The select board can make recommendations, and it's not. I guess has the authority, but the voters have the. They we'll have the authority of the voters Wait, approver, but yeah. But that comes after. Um, so. But the voters approve the budget or don't approve the budget. So if the budget approves the way that the funding is handled. So there's budget, there are, there's, what else is in there, approvals. The amount to be applied to taxes is a specific item, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then any of their overage for surplus is a specific item. So we'd have to have those specific votes. And if those votes all pass, then we would use the funds in the way that those votes pass. Well, it's usually just incorporated in our whole budget. So just so our budget number is the a budget number, and then it the budget, passes. They would prove right. the way we're allocating. Yeah. Okay. That's part of the bigger conversation. But, so yeah. Evan, that means that what you're saying, what you're saying is not necessarily the case because they're just approving the budget, and then we're we're responsible for the total total budget amount and how it's allocated. There's another way to possibly do that. And that would be what we have traditionally done is applied X, you know, a certain dollar amount to a certain proposal, such as highway reserve or reappraisal fund. We could also propose leaving a certain sum of money, certain portion of that money as dedicated for other purposes. That has been done in the past. And if it's if the voters approve the concept of dedicated for other purposes, then my belief and understanding is that that would give the board the flexibility to uh, spend it on what they determine to be other purposes. And that would be an article as other purposes. Well, it would be so that what Brian has on the bottom of his spreadsheet there is proposals for how to reserve the um, surplus. <laughs> um, in, in his proposal, he's proposing 125 to reduce taxes, right? And um, I'm trying to get to that place in your spreadsheet. What line item is it, Brian? 475 this, is to reduce taxes. Yeah, 475, 476, 477. I don't have other numbers in there. Those were just a couple. Yeah. So things that's that we had discussed where, as maybes. That's where we would put if we if if we want to prioritize, if we want to propose <laughs> reserving a portion of that total estimated surplus for other purposes, such as uh, the reappraisal fund or the highway capital reserve fund or the buildings and grounds fund. That's where we would do that. And I suggested in my email today with regard to the articles that we add an article, and this would be for the first time, as far as I know, 
uh, add an article seeking specific voter authorization for the reservation, approving or authorizing the board to use or apply the reserve funds for those purposes. And I think that addresses Walter's concern head on in terms of, you know, giving the voters the authority to uh, review and approve how the surpluses are being allocated. So very specifically, the thing that's voted on is, shall the voters authorize the total fund expenditure for operating expenses of three plus million dollars, of which 1.9, almost two, shall be raised by ta taxes, 1.3 by non-tax revenues. Those by taxes, raised by taxes is our operating budget that's funded by the tax base. And the remaining is the op operating budget also within the budget um, that's not raised by tax funds. So it could be many different revenue sources, I would assume. Um, the bottom line is the total expenditure of 2.3, 3 .3 million essentially is what's being approved. And the board can apply however they see fit once the budget amount is approved. Yes, I knowing we completely report to the tech to the voters. Yeah, the select yeah, board has do. authority over individual line items and, and the allocation there. The voters approve our totals and that's it. So it wouldn't be specific, but the, I guess the I mean, you're right. it's not specific. Is my point: the, the voters do not vote on every single line item, but certainly the uh, the intent is to follow the budget that's presented to the vote. Because yeah. likewise, voters can't come in and say, "I want you to cut fifty thousand from the chair for money." All they can do is say fifty thousand dollars. Correct. Yeah. Now, well, that's David Williams' interpretation of it, and it's what we have to deal with. He's never okay. been challenged. He's never been challenged. He's not. He's not been challenged. So okay. So where are we landing here? So Brian, you're proposing the one twenty five. Eric, you suggested that it's usually half of. Well, the amount. Yeah, I, I'm it's less than that. I'm kind of going to go on 209. If we do 125, it ends up uh, increasing the amount to be raised by taxes by 5.3 percent. You did what? If we do the 125,000 towards uh, the budget. Unless, unless the spreadsheet is wrong, I'm coming up with an increase in the amount to be raised by taxes from last year to this year of 5.3%. Oh, that was on here somewhere. Yeah, and we've made some changes since, but probably not significant enough. I mean, yeah, to, it's a good point. That's how it changed. Uh, increase small. taxes. <laughs> well, I think all the changes should be reflected, but I'm not sure. How come I see four percent? Where do you, if you look on page uh, 124, there's a there's several different ways of calculating. 123. That's what it does. 123. Pick a number Line 123 is the amount to be raised by taxes and the change That's percent 5.8. Duncan said 4.3. So Duncan's updating numbers as we talk. Right. If you're in line with the rate of inflation, you know, that, that's a fair, that's very, that's, you know, sound good. We don't like seeing 6% increase or 5%, but the cost is looking at 8%. I mean, everybody's, you know, see, and what I, I would be very comfortable with 125,000. Yeah. I, I needed some time more information on these other options, buildings and grounds, reappraisal funds for- Well, we need to F talk about that right now. So yeah, that's case let's talk about it right now. Can we put it on it? I mean, I don't know how you put something in the budget that says 
I mean, I want to address Walter's concerns, but I also oh, want to have some flexibility. To, uh, but if if we need to if we need some money for matching grant for whatever we want, it'd be nice to be able to. Have. I don't know how much flexibility they have. I mean, watching us this year, we seem to be able to move money around and spend more and spend less. The, the board has line item control, so you yes, can so we can raise and lower line items. Right. But we can't ever spend more than what the people will vote on. Correct. And to kind of retain the public's trust and be good stewards of the money, yeah. we should be adhering as close as we can to the budget that they have approved. Have approved. So any change we make to it should be very seriously considered. I understand that. Even though you do have the authority to move money around and make changes, you do so. Somebody wins and somebody loses. You do that. Yeah, when it's necessary, you do it. You have the right to, but you don't do it just every day at at will. So basically, we have eighty five thousand. Right, that's what I'm. That's what I'm going to say. Eighty five thousand dollars is. We can apply it to all in one thing. We could split it up however we want to propose it here. It seems to me that it, you know you you folks have a lot more experience in what you what you want to do with that money. I do like the idea of having some money if there's grant money floating around, which I think there is. It'd be nice for us to. Have have the ability to match it. And quite often there's a town that requires right. So right. you could allocate ten thousand of that eighty five for is that something that you I don't you recall write in, that I don't recall ever seeing that in a budget no. before. But we've done things like uh some of this one time money was applied towards paving some some right. Oh, well, yeah, we used seen, it a couple never, never. swear out the memory no. Um but yeah, we just want to we want to come up with a description. We don't have to have the exact wording of what that description looks like tonight, but I would like some guidance about where do you want to see the money go? We wanted to put some more money into the reappraisal fund, reserve fund. Yeah. That was a big one. Do you typically, we if we're playing around with 85,000, do we typically try? Where are you coming up with 85,000? I was donating it. If with the uh, estimated cash on hand, if you take out the one hundred and twenty-five thousand being applied towards reducing taxes, it leaves about eighty-five thousand. Like eighty-four thousand. Eighty-four four hundred and sixty-three. Okay. Three cents. Well, but that's out of the uh, uh, that's out of the two hundred nine thousand, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 To my to my way of thinking, the only amount of that money that that two hundred nine that's really safe, reasonably safe to dedicate is two hundred and five, which is Rosemary's cash on hand figure at the end of twenty twenty two, which after town meeting because we're having an audit done this year, will be an audited and known number. And she's, I mean, you, Rosemary, you're usually within a few dollars of of the audited figures. Am I wrong about that? No, you're correct. Well, she can't say that publicly. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's probably closer to a few cents, um, you know, to the, the to the audited number. But my point is, if you've got an audited number, then that's a known known audited number that you can make a decision on. But um, we don't and, have that audited number for the people to vote on. Right? We don't, and that's why I would why why I proposed in my email of today, which people may not have been able to see, to actually um, make an article, a, 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 an article seven, which would read something to the effect of. Uh, I'm having a hard time reading it. Um, so the so Article Six, I would really like to if we're using one hundred twenty five k, which I'm totally supportive of. Where'd you go, Duncan? I lost you. Can you hear me? Yeah, and now. Okay. Um. So, 
as far as Article Six, which is the the draft article for um, approving a budget, I think it would be prudent for us to add a phrase in that article, which would read. Um, so the, I'll just read the entire article as as I. Um, I'm can I, can, is this, if this is about the article, can we wait until we get to that point in our? Well, agenda? I think it's. I think no, I don't think we can because I think it's totally appropriate to the discussion of how to deal with the surplus. Okay, uh, that, so you want a generic surplus item? Is that what your point is, though? Uh, well, uh, my my point is twofold. One is if the article which the voters approve the budget includes a phrase stating that one hundred and twenty five thousand of that will be taken from the surplus to reduce taxes that's crystal clear that that is actual voter authority to approve yep. 125,000 of the surplus to Got apply it. to the budget then the second article or the it would be article number 7 would be a specific article asking the voters exclusive of what they already approved to reduce taxes um, to grant the authority to the select board to spend the surplus on you know two or three different items and one of those could be dedicated for other purposes to you know to get to mark's question about having <clears throat> what some people might refer to as a slush fund <clears throat> uh, but a, a a contingency, let's call it. I don't like slush fund discussions. <laughs> well, I, I don't I understand either. your point, but that's, I mean, we do have a budget that we have control over. So I'm just wondering what the value of that is. And I understand well, we, the point of surplus and having- Because we're, if you have a surplus and you don't dedicate it for another purpose, then the money doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the taxpayers. And we're talking about dedicating to a specific purposes. Correct. So, yeah. So my, and my point is that I think of the $209,000, really 205 of that is pretty, you know, you could pretty much take that to the bank. I'd, I'd say that's a good number. Assuming everybody pays their taxes. Yeah, that's assuming everybody pays their delinquent taxes. Though. They usually do. So are we but, so but going back to the proposed reservations? Like I hear you on wanting just a general approval of spending additional surplus funds. Got it. But when we talk about the other reservate the other reservations, are we all feeling like we want to commit funds to building and grounds and reappraisal too? I have, specifically, I have. Specifically, so forget to, I didn't mean to say that word, very specifically, and other other things we would want to specify dedicating those funds to? I have a suggestion for that that I'll throw out that people can talk about. Sure. I would suggest um, 15,000 for the Highway Capital Reserve. 40,000 for buildings and grounds reserve and 25,000 for a reappraisal fund. Buildings and grounds, Duncan, is that broad enough that we could, uh, I, I would like to spend money on efficient things. That would, all, that would, that would fall. That would be an eligible expense for the building and grounds. Reserve. Okay. But if you want to spend a lot, you should plan on bringing more to the pool than they are. Buildings and grounds, 25 for reappraisal and highway 15. And Mark, there is going to be grant money out there for energy efficiency improvements. I know. Buildings. So I want to make sure that we have the ability to capture that. And I think putting money in the reserve fund for that purposes could go towards meeting the town match. Do you think that... Um, we we should um, dedicate any money specifically for matching grants, other than efficiency. Uh, if I knew of a specific grant proposal that we had, you know, right now I would say yes, but I don't think it meets the 
straight face test to say that we want to reserve some money for a potential grant that might come along maybe. I have a different proposal. And I disagree with you, Duncan. So what's your proposal? Uh, my proposal is forty thousand for the reappraisal reserve fund. Ten thousand directly to the greater, not to the capital equipment reserve fund. If I had to funnel through great, but we're gonna pay interest on that thing. That blows my mind. So reducing principal or reducing the principal of the loan would reduce the interest. And then buildings and grounds. Do we have other higher interest and loans? I do agree with Duncan on the fact that we what should was your buildings and grounds? That would be 30, right? 40 and 10. I do agree with Duncan that we should plan for $80,000 in cash on hand. Not. And the and the difference between the two oh nine and the two oh five, we could we could just say that's you know, to be safe, we could say uh whatever it is, forty one hundred dedicated for other purposes. And that would wow. that would get us through to next year. You always do this, spend dedicate every penny that you possibly can figure out. No. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. shaking his head. Yes. Yeah. We, don't, we didn't dedicate every. Penny. If you don't, it's the taxpayers. Yeah, we did. Whatever we estimate, we have we dedicated in our budget. Is dedicated last year. We had we put a whole bunch of stuff budget. in reserve stuff on us. We did the same thing. See. Yeah, but like, how did that work out? Because last year we spent an extra sixty thousand dollars in March. We didn't have that sixty thousand dollars allocated. As uh, because when, that's cash on hand for this year, that's why. Sorry, see, this whole two years ahead and the year behind is if you don't, a little bit, and it's not counting, it's like an M. To, to uh, Duncan's point, yes, 205. I, I say you could bank on that. The 4,000 that is definitely an estimate, but that 4,000 will be an audited cash on hand at this time next, next year. Correct. But when you go to the town meeting, if you're only showing where the two hundred five thousand you're proposing for the two hundred five thousand to go somewhere, you're leaving the four thousand there uncommitted. The Walters are going to raise their hand and say, uh, "What are you doing with this four thousand cash on hand? You know, you don't show where it's going. So you really want to." show it being committed to something but with the understanding that voters know the money may not be there and if it isn't it will not get applied towards a reserve fund or a a paving of highway or for uh, matching funds on <coughs> but you're showing it it's going to be somewhere if it is yeah and, I'm sorry. And that's the only I hear where where Duncan's going. Um th there is two different ways to skin this cat. You can show it in your budget, all of the excess cash on hand, you're gonna commit it to some place. You you want to make sure you explain it to the voters that this is what we estimate, or this is what we have the cash on hand, this is what we estimate for this current fiscal year. This is where we're proposing that it be applied. It can be done in, in here in your budget. And I, I think there's an advantage to that, or you could do a special article as Duncan was referring to, it would commit all of the money to wherever. The only problem I think with an article is if the voters vote on an article, it is committed. You can't, we can't move that money around if the situation changes. If they vote for 205,000 to so much going for reducing taxes, so much going to whatever, 
it has to go there. We, if situation has changed, we can't change. We can't move it. Well, then how do you set it up so that if situations change, we can move it? I think if you leave it in the budget, that's it. Leave it right where it is. Just leave it right where it is. Yeah. And you see what I'm getting at, Duncan? I don't. I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. My concern is if we do a article like you were proposing. It locks us to whatever the article, the language of the article is. I think that's the intent, isn't it? Well, but that limits our flexibility, Duncan. I'm, I'm concerned. It's not. It's not our money. It's the taxpayers' money. No, but my concern is if situations change where we need to move the money somewhere else to do something different. Or the money isn't there as we anticipated. We're locked. We have to commit money to the whatever the voters approve. That's my concern with an article. Well, I don't. I, I perhaps we can change the wording of the article to. My my article was based on an audited balance. So it would it would only if if you have an audited balance and that number is good, then I think you can take that money to the bank. I mean, I, I just don't I don't see that as being an issue. Um, just getting consensus around the room. You're interested in in budget rather than in an article. I agree with you. Evan. I would prefer in the budget. And Mark. What what do you mean by in the budget though? I'm, I mean, we put it in our budget proposed as budget. proposed reservation rather than having a specific article. Proposed reserve or proposed reservation? Pro pro so, uh, proposed but, reservation of cash when it comes in. Okay. Thank you. So if you're putting it in there in the budget and the, and the voters, our theory has always been in the past that if if the voters approve the budget and that's as that's in there as part of the budget as a proposed reservation, then we have essentially uh, gotten voter approval to spend those surplus funds. Yeah. I don't think you can have it both ways. You can't you can't say on the one hand we're seeking your authority in to approve a budget which includes um, reservation you know proposed reservation of these funds and oh by the way things didn't work out right, we've changed how we want to do that. I'm sorry, I don't think that, I don't think that passes the straight face test. Yeah, I'm not following you either. Okay. I'm not following that, Duncan. If we put it in the budget as just a proposed reservations, that, I mean, I think it, it passes the straight face test. We're telling voters we can't cut it to the penny. We need to be able to move I don't, I don't know. What is this? We're, we're talking about a known number, Mark. We're talking about $205,000. That's right. Surplus. And we just, we just leave it there as, as our ability to, to use it as needed. And we know about it. it. It's, it's about not, an expected It's an expected number. It's not a firm number because it includes yeah. delinquent taxes. I'm going to call this. Um, I'm calling it. We need to move on. We're at the end of our agenda based on the time on the clock right now. So... Motion, we have a lot to do. Motion to adjourn. And, and Duncan, you lost right. that vote. Yep. And yep, agreed. So, okay. It's going to take five minutes to summarize the changes that I'm making to Go. the budget. I'm off the call. He's off the call. Go. All right. On line. I'm changing the pilot payment for FY24 from 440,000 to 450,000. Yeah. I am changing the records preservation fund to take 7,500 out in FY24. I'm not taking anything out for FY23. Correct. I'm going to look at basketball numbers uh, with an eye towards increasing the revenue generated for FY24, and hopefully we'll have a better estimate for uh, the 
FY23, once Dean has uh, his first returns in for basketball. FY24 should match 23. Whatever 23 you land on, thinking we're going to close the year at, we should be pretty close to that for 24. Okay. While we're in rec, is it impossible on 82 to change gymnastics to gymnastics dance? I can at least do that on That's mine. Was there anything for you? Or? I think it might say that on uh, it might be on the network. In the network already? Okay. I can change it easily on, on this one. Right, thank you. All right. Next page. I don't have any changes. On the page after that, for mileage, I'm reducing FY24 to $250. Next page, lines 222 and 223. I'm revisiting the, the numbers that I've got here, the formulas that I used to make them, and I'm checking the meeting minutes uh, from the last meeting. For cemetery maintenance, I'm increasing that from 6,000 to 7,500. Line 279 uh, mileage for the rec committee on FY24, I'm increasing that uh, to $150. Line 366, paving blacktop capital. I'm going to, for FY23, show the full contract amount. We'll create a new line for, uh, on the revenue side, to deal with the obligated funds from last, from FY22, that are being brought into FY23 to pay for the full contract amount. I'm also increasing FY24 to $105,000. And that is the end of my favorite. If I can offer a suggestion, oh, I also found one of my own typos on line 471. Uh, it should be the estimated for FY22 and FY23 potential hand not 21 and 22. Okay. Um, I've heard a couple, I've heard some input on things you might like for reservations. Would it be helpful if I just wrote up, if I, the same way that I picked 125,000, if I just picked a couple? Pick some placeholders. I think we've all agreed on a sum of money in capital equipment, however it's done, a sum of money in reappraisal and a sum of money in buildings and grounds. That one agrees there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so those are the three. Those three get some placeholders. Yeah, I can put some placeholder numbers in there so it totals up to something so that it might be a little bit easier to arrive at what the final is. That would be helpful. Uh, it'd be good if you just use an average of the numbers that were thrown out. Sure. Talk about it. Okay. Donna, do you have those numbers in the minutes? I have them. There are, I was not completely sure about them. Evans were buildings and ground is 30, reappraisal is 40, and applying to the principal the greater principal is 10. Okay. And what were Duncan's? Duncan's were buildings and grounds 40. Um Reappraisal 25 and highway 15. All right. Thank you. Is he gone? So. Nope, he left. And that is all the changes that I have projected. Perfect. Thank okay. you very much. That's what I have pronounced. Yeah. Nobody else woke up. So I think we can. All right. We can move on from here. Next up, we have a review of invoices and orders. 
Oh, we have my favorite part of me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Grass up heel for town garage, 7 and 70. Okay. Uh, Grasso Fuels, nine thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. You have questions about any specifically? By all means. Well, Mount County Sheriff's Department quarterly patrol and dispatch one thousand four hundred forty-four thousand nine hundred forty-six dollars and fifty cents. Store reporter uh, for an ad ninety-eight dollars and fifty cents. Winter Equipment Company, JAMA System, Winter Parts and Supplies, $2,720.58. Work Safe Signage and Posts, $1,934. Questions? Okay. Uh, review and approve minutes from December 19th. Motion to approve minutes from December 19th. Motion to second. Yep. I will abstain. Oh, did you change that I was not here? Right. Hmm. Can't we, oh no! I think I, I I didn't. I think I meant to go in and, and change that. And uh, and I and I think if you weren't there, I think there was some place where I had you saying something that obviously couldn't have been you who was there. Because I remember in my my notes, it was sort of unclear. You're like, oh, the sheriff saying this. It was a Duncan, and obviously if you weren't there, I don't know why I included it with you, but it must have been Duncan. So I can fix that. Uh, let's pick it up next time. We'll have the same conversation next time. Okay, so I, I can send out the revised version for next time. Without my quote. Yeah. So I'll quote you on something different. Uh, select board issues and concerns. You want a lot of or No. God, no. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I guess that was not shot right. <laughs> do you have anything now? No, I just okay. I can I do want to say that I've been poking around the world to see what other towns are using the offer money for. And so it's kind of being very creative. Westford is doing interesting things. I put on for the spring BTTMA the professional association. Uh I put that on as one of the topics at our next conference. We have a roundtable discussion on what towns are doing for it. Crassberry also. They yeah. have some very creative, thoughtful things that are that, that are for money going in. Yeah. And yeah, I think I'll have some good ideas to bring back next time. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Can't wait to hear all about it. Um treasurer's report. What do you have, Rosemary? We got our new CLA numbers. Our new what? CLA. CLA. Oh, oh, oh. Is that good? The good news is it? Well, I don't really call it good news. Here's it's down to 89.67%. That was a bit more than 90%. 80%, we have to do a reason. Right. Oh, well, we can do a statistical one. I think next we year did. we probably have to do a statistical reason. Yeah. We didn't. There was no statistical. No, we did not. Two years ago. Yeah. We haven't done one since the last time we had a pre Yep. You're right. We need an assessor for a statistical pre I'm not sure. We'll look. We'll look Anybody in. has to be. We have to have that. somebody accounting. It's different yeah. rate or different. Yeah. Uh, you know, like trailers typically are depreciated and yeah. houses are appreciated. And Joanne Benford told me the other day that um, she is not going to run for re-election for auditor. And in the past, Sue and Louise have stated once she's done, they may also be done. We post for so that, that way, that, is that up for this town meeting? Um, Joanne is up for this town meeting. In the past, the girls have said once Joanne is done, they may consider also getting it done. Mm -hmm. sure. They're coming in Friday to do some bottles. And Are you going to buy them lunch and cake <laughs> and whatever else they want? Do you want me to you know that email you sent me about Eric's yeah. position? You want me to add the auditor? Yeah, that would be lovely. Yes, please. Okay. 
I asked, just so everybody knows, I asked Rosemary to post what the process is to run for select board, um, to get a petition and all of that. Um, deadline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did any of you post? You haven't posted. I haven't posted it yet. Yeah. But yeah, that would be great if you add that. Yeah. No, we're all the Google. You find out what the process is pretty easily. <laughs> you actually are if you want it. <laughs> yeah, but my condolences to anyone. You don't speak the language. Some towns have done away with the auditor position if you have a professional auditor for oh. a year. So, so our contract yeah. serve it if we get but a that contract. That would have to be ordered by the voters. I see. Okay. Just like we did for assessors. Mm -hmm. Should that be considered this year? Well, we, we'll know year. After. we can this year we can try and get somebody and then if we don't get somebody or if the other two want to leave, we'll have an idea of how difficult it was to find one new person. So we might be better informed next year. And since we have made the decision that we'll have an audit every single year. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Uh, bad things I had. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what was it? Eight? What did it drop to eighty nine from? From ninety six. That's huge. Seven percent of my bank. So it's a big dump. Are there any planned purchases? No planned purchases for this. Perfect. We need some volunteers. Beautification grant application. We need some people to sell their houses cheap. So <laughs> take a loss. Um. So the beautification committee is interested in applying for a Vermont Community Foundation SPARC grant uh, to continue with the mural work on the town garage. And I'll turn over to Kyle. Yeah, I just need some copies of the actual grant itself that highlighted the first salient point, points that um, I think would make our application really strong. I like the uh, um, So. I don't think it's new news that to this board that we always had the plan of continuing um, the mural project on the town garage. So we started with Andrew Johnson that sort of the center middle piece and we'd like to flank it with scenes of Johnson that put the humans in action in uh, Johnson specific landscape scenes, whether it's Deer Park or Spring's End or Prospect Rock. I mean, we'll we'll decide as a committee and with the artists on, on what uh, scene we choose. But um, but uh, we would like to um, get this mostly grant funded this year. There's no match involved. Um, like I said, we we ticked most of the boxes off for this spark grant, so I think that we'll we have a good chance of getting it. Um, and we would go for the full five thousand dollars. And then whatever else is needed in addition to the five thousand will probably use, you know, again a little bit of our yearly budget, but then also fundraise and try to get materials donated like we did for the last one, which was two percent. So that's the plan. And you know, now that the rail trail has been completed, I just feel like anything and everything that we can do to bring um, you know, highlight our town and have people and look and think and maybe come into downtown would be great. So good time. So the funding, if we um, the application is due no later than March 7th. Um, and if the grant, you know, if we get it, we know by May. So then Finn, the same artist, would be able to start working through the summer again and hopefully do an install in the fall. That would be the proposed timeline. Um, and what else? The only thing that we would really be asking from the town, there's no match involved with this, but again, uh, some of the public works time for installing. The last one. I don't want to pressure work that voted. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> What, what would $5,000 get us? What, what does that amount of money get you through? Yeah, so for Humans of Johnson, we paid in 2500 for that. 
So I'm hoping to get two murals. One on each side of that. One of, yeah, I'm looking more for horizontal orientation. So humans is very square. And then two horizontal scenes on each side. So what, and it sort of goes along with the ramp trail, I think, too. What would getting paintings done like the silos in Cambridge, what does that cost? I would imagine tens of thousands of dollars because they had to do that outside with lifts the entire time, so large scale. That'd be, you know, I mean, Finn is. How did they do that? How did they? I think they got to create, I think they also got grants. Um, there's bigger grants out there for things like that. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's just they did a wonderful job down there. Yeah, they, I, held, they held up so well. They yeah. held up surprisingly yeah. well. On the map. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Well, I I like those, but that's Cambridge, and we're a different town right. and different yeah. flavor and different, you know. And I think we felt like Finn executed the mural very, very well. And it, and the other part of it is that we just loved that connectivity with the college and we Finn was a recent MBU graduate. And then, you know, that that was a great collaboration with MBU. Um, I'm all for you going for grants, particularly if there's no matching funds. Um, when it comes to the mural, there's been a lot of feedback. I know you've heard good and bad feedback. Um, we all have, frankly. And I guess my my request is one that we just are careful that we're not recreating a similar dynamic and that we're taking that feedback as constructive and assessing what the possibilities could be based on the feedback rather than already deciding we're redoing the same thing. Um, yeah. You know, I think we should hear the community and I don't think we should hear hate but I do think, because there definitely was hate out there, for sure, but we should hear the constructive side of it, because I think that getting feedback and using that constructive feedback, I think that there are people who very much wanted the mural to succeed, who also have good constructive feedback. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the grant itself, I'm all for getting the funding. Cool. Yeah, no, I agree. And um maybe what we'll do is just make sure that, you know, like on whatever, just really uh, get the word out that we're having, you know, that we have a regular Thursday once a month meetings, we'll be talking about mural stuff, anyone and everyone's welcome to come. Um, one of the constructive feedbacks that I heard actually was from you, Eric, wanting to see sort of more action. So that's, that's something that um, we plan to keep it out and making sure that it looks like folks are doing things. And um, another piece of feedback was that um, you know that there that the more landscape and specific to to Johnson. So um, bridges. <laughs> Maple sugar, maple sugar. Yeah, which yeah, incorporated into the yeah. There's a sap bucket. There's a, you know, we were trying to capture the flavor of Johnson. I personally would love to see something more along the lines of Cambridge. You know, um, certain members of the community have wanted to brand Johnson as an art capital of the world, and there's different styles of art and everything. Well, I'll that works. Or state, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Um, I would like to almost <laughs> shoot for the county. <laughs> well, we're far behind Cambridge for sure, depending on who you are, right? Um, and I think going for the grant is great. I also know that there is complications with timing, and I'm not committing to any specific time by committing to the grant. And I'd like to see sample artwork before the night of the meeting where we select the design. Okay, okay. I don't mean to sound really bad. But, but. Uh, uh, it was the middle. Of, it's the middle. Right. 
um, uh, at least a preliminary, and that, that was part of that presentation. You showed, I think, three or four different sketches that they had done, and one was um, landscapes. They weren't real specific to you, uh, like scenes in Johnson. It was sort of a general landscape that you would see in Vermont, but we would like them to do something more tailored to you so that it's a bit recognizable, like, oh yeah, that's Journey's End, or oh yeah, and oh, where is that place? I want to go there, what not, and we can say, yeah, it's just miles down the road. So part of it is to, you know, capture the audience that's riding by immediately, have them stop, look at the little plaque, and be like, oh, that's a place that's down the road, and so pointing them in those directions so that the ripple effect is, you know, how much. So you would like a plaque as well with, with this? I, I think the plaques are really useful information. People always want to know what the title of the piece is or what it's depicting and who the artist is. And Yeah, um, I can that, I can see what you're saying. That's common for you know, it. Yeah, I, it's just the kind of a heavy equipment area creates somewhat of a hazard for certain people, but at least we know. Is the plaque, isn't it dismounted on the building? Yeah, it's pretty it's just a small it. plaque on the building. Jason's never mentioned that. It isn't like it's three so we on it on the on the but this is about what yeah. we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. we, we well, I was just talking about my reservations. Fine. Done. Oh. Thank you. Yes, I'm done. Okay. Good. Uh, does everyone want to give the blessing to move forward with the grant? Yes. The formal motion. Yeah, why not? So move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yep. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's have it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I love the bridge. Turn out really now. Yeah. The bridge. Oh. Okay, wait, no, wait, stop. No, we have to keep moving. Okay. Spick it at Legion Field. Um, I forwarded you an email. We added this from last minute. It's about getting the spigot on Legion Field. Um, Eric, you had some questions about the cost. Valid questions about cost. I, think, I guess the village is now going to turn it on because that was a stumbling block for a few years that they wouldn't turn it on for us. As I understand it, yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing was they have these frost free spigots that yeah. it's like a little handle and I it turns on. Yeah, yeah. And it drains back down in so you, you don't have to worry about it freezing. And it also is lockable when you get it down. I'm not sure if they looked into something like that or. We can give I, parameters on what we like should look. They may. I, I'd be really surprised if they didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how they have it set up. I know they, they have it set up for Tuesday Night Live, some way to have water, but I'm it not sure. It can't just be a host. It's right, got to right. be a cross street hiker. So my concern with the whole thing is that when asked about whether this is budgeted or not, the, air, the answer was no. It's not budgeted. Um, yeah, I guess that's my concern. <laughs> Looks like they'll have extra money in their facilities, and so it's kind of a little bit last minute for me, I guess. I mean, if they, they get rid of their portalettes for it's sitting over there and there's nobody using it, right. they'd have enough money to pay for it. They have enough money to put about thousands to get to the ground. Um, how much is the total expense? Well, they had an estimate of $500, which I thought for installation is a little expensive, but. I, I don't know what they're planning on doing. I, I didn't even read down that far. I just thought, I wonder if they got the frost free spigot. They and have to. Can't possibly. Otherwise, they're turning it yeah. off with a silcock and then turn it, you know, on for summer. That has been the practice. So they don't have a frost free hydrant for a lot of time. So my understanding is that. Um, well, one, I think we could come back, go back and say, if you can fit it within your budget, rec, fine. 
think that would be an appropriate response mm -hmm. from the board. Um, they needed approval for us to move forward um, because the village was looking for our approval from what I gather. Um, but if they got a conventional spigot, they want to insulate it, you know, like Mark's saying, that's not going to cut it. Okay. The village will... We can give whatever whatever feedback we'd like. And if we'd like to have a motion that says we approve them working as, so as long as blah, 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 whatever. Maybe they should come in and make their proposal. Uh, they probably want it soon, right? Yeah, they wanted it yeah, last they week. They want yeah, it. Yeah. We've been trying to get it on the timing. I wish we would talk about it in the fall instead of when it's but going to freeze. Maybe, maybe they can come back to us in the fall. Does the fire department flood it first? Do the initial flooding? I don't think so. Not anymore. They had in the past. They used to. I don't know what they worked out last year. I know there was some some difficulty with getting it flooded last year. But I, I was not intimate, intimately involved in. Doesn't look like we're going to have ice skating weather for a while. <laughs> so I'll ask them to come to the next meeting. Okay. That's what you're saying? Okay. That's, sounds good. That's well, to be fair, I did tell her to figure, figure out what. Figure out so what. to be fair to her, that was on me, not her. Um, but okay. Uh, Review town draft meeting warning. Warning, warning, warning. This is... um, by the way, I asked to throw this one in this meeting because I feel like getting this in front of us earlier rather than later will give us some time to go back and forth for what it's worth. Um, All right. Yeah. So it's been a little while since we've had to warn for an in person meeting. Um, so this is this is our warning. It's all pretty standard. Um, you know, all the Rosemary will double check the dates. I think I got them right. Avoid holidays, but you know, check, check my word and make sure that that's true. Uh, the only article we have. At this point that is um you know not a not a required article is a request from the tree board to establish an arboretum reserve fund. Is that a request from them or a it is a, it's a request from them um and the language up to uh in accordance with it is their language. I added the remainder section just to make it comply with the recommended language for the establishment of a reserve fund. The requirement that we have in there is we have to define how it's funded. Yeah. Um, Sue gave some feedback that she doesn't really want it funded by unspent funds, uh, like the, the surplus of the line item what she's really looking for is when people make donations and other things to uh, the Arboretum that there's a place for it to go. And they might spend some of their annual money to make contributions to their own reserve fund, but mostly it would be handling donations. Don't donations come into their budget and then they would go into the fund or no? Well, they don't have one now, but what there isn't a dedicated is I understand tree board revenue line. There is a tree board revenue line. Okay. How do we normally handle donations? Do they go on on that line? Or? I think it's either might be grants and donations. Rosemary, what were you thinking? What were you thinking about the tree board revenue yeah. line? Yeah, when we when we said donations going into a dedicated fund, what were you thinking about that? We didn't bring any food. 
Sometimes they use dedicated their donations towards their current year. Well, if someone puts a note on it, a note on this thing for the reserve fund, then it would have to go out to the yeah. Yeah. So they have in the past they have gotten no donations for the arboretum. And this is on the people's checks for the arboretum. When that happens, do you have well maybe you don't have to, but do you have to do something special with that to ensure that it was spent on it? I keep track of it yet. Mm -hmm. But not in the budget. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a budget line for our blade and specifically. Where's the tree board revenue line somewhere in here? Three board is yes. But if it goes in our budget with the revenue, then it just at the end of the year it becomes general. It, yeah, it becomes general fund. It's in the state and federal grants. Because most of the grants is it's federal money. Yeah, there are free board revenue and grants, one thirty four. But if so somebody donates money, they want it funded by donation. Yes. So let's change it to what they're asking for. Yep. Or is that, am I wrong? Just not this time. Unspent out, but donated, right? I'm wrong like hundreds of times a day. So I know. Gotta check. It's pretty good. Um, I mean, maybe we should give them the flexibility to be funded annually by unspent and donated, donated funds. I don't know why they wouldn't want that. I don't know. Because if they don't spend the money, it just comes general the fund. There's reserve fund is fund that gets on the funds. There are Rec a few. does. Mm. Uh, I think skate park does. Most of the reserve funds are funded by skate park does. Yeah. The emergency management fund goes that way. Most of them are. I meant like committee wise, because like Historic Society and Conservation Commission don't. Right, right. Conservation Commission, that's actually been a little bit, it would have been easier for us if they had funded it by on spec, but they requested line it by line item. Yeah, which is different. Than yeah. everybody else. Um, did somebody else ask us for this earlier in the year? I feel like Historical Society might have, am I dreaming? An article? Not specific an article, but for a reserve fund. The reserve fund's pretty healthy. Yeah, they got a reserve fund. Rosemary, is the fifth grade going to do a potluck? I don't know. Have I heard? Oh. Maybe, maybe you should find out if they want a pizza day. Yeah, if they want to do pizzas again. Then I'll have to step back to the select board for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So um, okay, so we're gonna just tell tree board is Sue the, the mm -hmm. chair for tree. Sue, yes, yeah. Um, maybe just tell her that what we've discussed, we think it would be beneficial to have both unspent and donated as the verbiage. The other thing that we need to talk about is whether or not we want to have economic developer a, an article or something else too. For, to Duncan's point on Article Six. That's a six, yeah. Before amount should be estimated amount of because we won't know the true amount until after the grand list is set. Right. And things could change. Or they will change. Well, we'll know how much money we have. We won't know know what the rate is, but we'll know how much money we're raising regardless of the grand list. Right. Okay. But if something, if, if we vote, if, if the voters vote on a budget, then that is what we can spend. But depending on if other funds or not come in, it could raise or lower the amount to be raised by taxes. I, I didn't mean to argue against putting the word estimated in there. I think that that's a, I think that, a nice oh, I see it. Yeah. little bit of cover. For things that came up, but I'm sorry, I was being pedantic about why we use it. 
We can't be reinventing this wheel right now. I mean, Why? this article must we, have been written every year for We never years. used to have that in there. This isn't written the same way. Last year reads, ready? Yeah. Shall the voters authorize total fund expenditures for operating expenses of law, of which blah shall be raised by taxes and blah shall be non-tax revenue? Is there a reason it's worded differently? Yeah, why is this different than the one? I... And it reads nearly the same to me, but... It's not the same. It says, yours says, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed budget? This says, shall the voters authorize total fund expenditures for operating expenses? You're talking about total budget. This is talking about operating expenses. This is about adopting a budget. And this is about um, funding expenditures. And that doesn't say estimated either, though, Beth. But it does not. Yeah, I've never seen. Have you always put estimated in there? We didn't used to put the taxes, the amount to be raised by taxes. We used to put the the budget, mm -hmm. what the budget was. Mm -hmm. The but I think this was something that came from the, the recommendation league. from the league and from our attorney was to add that last part of the sentence about how much was going to be raised by taxes mm -hmm. both this phrasing and the previous phrasing this was the 2018 or 2019 whatever the last time we had an in-person meeting was um i see there was not an intentional change between the two that one was written for a virtual meeting and this was written for an in-person meeting i borrowed the last one we had written for an in-person meeting just because it was, there were fewer changes needed. Uh, so that would have been 2020 because we went into lockdown like the 14th of March or something. Is that correct in the wording of shall the town vote to adopt or should it be shall the town adopt? Because we're not asking them to vote. We're asking them to adopt. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead and vote however you want. I think that we can we can probably change it. Yeah. Both versions of this have been approved by the league and our attorney. Uh, I do not know why we changed the wording off of this to the wording we used last year. How's that one read again? That one sounded bad. So the voters authorize the total fund expenditures for operating expenses of 32 million, 33 million, of which 1.9 million raised by taxes and 1.2 million by non tax revenue. What if, what if those numbers change between town meeting and July 1st? One of the non tax revenues uh, pilot is, it goes into a reserve or it doesn't, uh, it goes less pilot comes in. We can't even raise, if we're locked in at this amount to be raised by taxes, we can't meet our budget. That's why Duncan was asking to put in the estimated, yeah, so that we'd have a little bit of a cushion if something happened and we suddenly realized that the amount to be raised by taxes was wrong. So that would make me feel more comfortable. I think we had the estimate. I did look at two other warnings from other towns, and it's very similar to what was in last year's. In that one, yes. So the 20 March 2020 uh, time meeting day, shall the voters authorize total fund expenditures for operating expenses of shall be raised by same thing as what's in last year's. Because they're approving a budget. 
I mean, they're approving, a, they're approving our fund expenditures and knowing that that gives us a, the authority to spend up to that amount, because really it gives us the authority to spend up to that amount. Like we're responsible for the spending. But if it's in an article, then we can only raise this amount for taxes and that, that, that amount for non-tax revenue. So if something like point, the yeah. pilot didn't come in, mm -hmm. we might be a little bit. Especially you didn't pick up on this a long time ago. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perplexed. <laughs> okay. I don't know who's on the board, but clearly they convinced you. Uh, You're just trying to go out confusing the hell out of it. Yeah, that's my goal. Is it working? <laughs> it's not that hard to do. Yeah, after 20 years, you'll have it. Yeah, 20 years, I'll be 90 years old. Sorry. I mean, I just keep going back, and it's the same. Like, historically, it's all the same wording. Right. So I'm going to change the wording to what it was last year. Sounds good. Do we want to add the word estimated? I, I know based on previous discussions, the word estimated is not in the model for it. That doesn't mean a whole lot. Add it. If nothing else, it would be a great conversation. Piece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you been grilled by Walter for hours on end? <laughs> um, maybe we should get um, feedback from our lawyer on that. Or the league. Or the league, somebody. Yeah, I, that seems like a look at me bear. Yeah. I guess, you know, some towns, they're non tax revenue is probably not as large as ours and is as vulnerable as ours is. We're very dependent. Yeah, we're a big well, we're a big receiving town. Almost well three quarters of a million dollars. Okay. Our revenue. That's all we can, there's no articles that have come in from the public or not yet. They have until the 19th. Is that when everything has to be in? Or just uh, yeah. money articles to say if somebody wants money. Yeah. When yeah. when does it go to print? It would be the printer the first of February. So people running for select board and stuff that are out there. That's some thirty. Yeah, to the end of the month. Um Rosemary, I'll publish that shortly. Kyle? Yeah, so um, Unification was hoping that there would be an article about a gardener. Gardener. I thought a couple meetings ago we sort of had a robust discussion around that and landed on that that would go before the voters, that position. So I'm surprised not to see it. It's not how I remember the conversation. I think there was a discussion about it. I just said a discussion. But I. I don't remember the board saying that it would go before the voters. It said if it was supported, it would put it before the voters. But my well, off on that. So I don't think I was here for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. But that Eric's not here for anything ever. When a different committee had first requested the the article to be on, we asked them to write up what they would like their wording to be, and we can review the wording. I mean, if it's a town committee, so there's two ways to get on the warnings, right? To go through the select board and to petition. Those are the two ways. And being a town committee, if the, I mean, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't bring it to the select board. And if the select board supports it being an article, then, you know, we'll help you get it on there. If the select board collectively doesn't, then you could petition to get it on too. Mm -hmm. um, but so if you want to come up with wording, um, send it to Brian or myself in advance. We can get it in our packet um, okay. and we'll go from there. When's your next meeting in a couple weeks? A week and a half. 
Sunday. Sunday. Uh, okay, Sunday. I was just wondering if we had our, I don't think we'll have had our monthly meeting at that point. We won't have another meeting before this is be our last due meeting because we need to go. Time. Yeah, we'll need to get everything in order. It'll be our last meeting before we get our everything signed off for the um, counterpart. So you could work a special meeting if you wanted to yeah. talk about it. Well, our, our meeting is the 16th. Mm -hmm. We're 16. gonna have to meet after that. Why? Because for a quick one. the petitions could come in on up till the 19th. Oh, uh, okay. So we can't really set this until after the 19th. Well, my calendar is pretty full. You might be meeting without me, but okay. <laughs> I mean, it can be a pretty quick meeting just to adopt yeah. the the warning. But... Okay. Might be at nine o'clock at night, but I'm good. That's I'm... fine. <laughs> so we're meeting on the 16th. Uh, one, people. Oh, Martin Luther Day, right? That's what I'm calling. Good. We need to have That's the third Monday, yeah. So we would potentially have time to. It needs to be submitted okay. in a properly written article format. So on the league, I assume that part of the league is free and open. There are the, the Secretary of State's office is really where you go for support yeah. on writing an article. Yeah. Um, the league also has some things for uh, of advice and some models, but Secretary of State is where they'll have resources to help citizens write in that. Mm -hmm. Are we now meeting at six o'clock? No, just for budget time. Just generally speaking, no. Um, but we've been doing it as a budget. So our next meeting won't be budget. This isn't so bad. This is only our fourth meeting that we've been called for budget. I don't yeah. think about that. We had either. like six last year. Yeah, we had a whole bunch of special meetings, but we aren't done yet. It's true. But we don't I think we're in pretty good shape. Oh, yeah. um, okay. Schedule. Back to our agenda. <laughs> We have more to go. But back on the articles, I think we should get something for economic developer. Because to that conversation earlier, last year's on economic development was um, shall the voters wrote authorize the town of Johnson to raise, appropriate, and expend up to forty thousand dollars for the purpose of community and economic development. It doesn't talk about hiring a person. Uh, and and maybe we do, maybe we don't want to try to do that. I don't know, but I think we need to do something about economic development or try to again. How much of that forty thousand did we spend? Zero. Yeah. But That's hopefully we'll start number. engaging with Brennan. What did you say? Nothing. How come that forty thousand not in our estimated year end? It has is and it's estimated to be spent. Because we maxed it out. Oh yeah. Because we're estimating to spend it. Yeah. Which we will not, because we're already halfway through the year. We could. At $180 an hour, Eric, we can spend it next week. <laughs> One fifty. Oh, the guy. One fifty. Okay. Uh, we could spend. I agree, we probably won't spend that. Anyway, what do we want to do about this for article? What? Let's say that goes to the estimate that we'll spend most everything and that we'll take in less. It's why we'll end up, we should, we'll hopefully end up with a certain list. Uh, do we want to do anything with an article for economic development? I think we either have to show it in the budget or an article or something, because the voters have already authorized us once to go ahead with this, and we just haven't done it yet. Yeah. Well, we've tried. Well, we've tried. But I hear you. How do, how do you propose I... to um, convince the voters that the $40,000? Oh, that's a fair job. That's I mean, not true. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I mean, you got to talk to it and explain it and what its purpose is. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you plead a good case, but voters are pretty. No, I understand that. It's just a little bit harder if we haven't spent the full yeah. of the this last year. So if we add 40,000 to our expenses, it'll make our rate change 7.3%. Uh, Wow. Instead of five point three. Or is it twenty two thousand to percent? Well, twenty two thousand is about a penny. Yeah. A penny is one percent of a dollar. One percent of a dollar, but not one percent. Regardless, we all get the point. So do we want to add it to our budget or do we want to have an article? It actually won't work that much. Or do we not want to do either? Why? I just plugged in forty thousand in one of the expense lines. Yes, but you're comparing to our budgeted number. Yeah. It, yeah. For the well, current right. year. Right. No, I'm looking at the change from 2000 from our budget 23 fiscal year 23 to our budget fiscal year 24. But is the number is the in here including the 40,000? I don't think it is because that was a separate article. Our fiscal year 24 doesn't include it, and our fiscal year 23 also wouldn't include it, I wouldn't think. Wouldn't. Right, so it wouldn't make any change. Like it if it's an article, sense. it wouldn't. So, but well, either we'll way, it won't. And the real dollar amount is raised by taxes because the amount we raised by taxes was an additional 40000 because that was a separate article. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. So they it's net not. each other out year over year. I got you. I got you. I'll prefer an article, um, but maybe one that gives freedom to hire a person. I don't know. That one was so vague. Yeah. I'd like a little bit more direction from the voters. And is 40 the right number? It's going to have to be this year. This year's half over. Next um, year. I mean, we're so doing it for 23 full order. You're proposing putting the number in the article. Yeah, $40,000. I'm also proposing an article to bring the articles out. We had this conversation last year. Yeah, bring those things out. I agree. Oh, all of the, uh, uh, you know, totally it, it would read something like, "Shall the voters of Johnson?" They're in old. They're in old articles. They are. Well, there you go. Bring that back. The thirty-five thousand dollars that they can actually budget. You know, they can vote on it. I agree with you. I am right there with you. Eric loves it because he's on his way out. <laughs> Well, years ago, every single one of those used to be a separate article. A lot of towns still do that. And yeah. there was more discussion on a $500 or a, a article for some nonprofit than there was on the whole budget. Perfect. Sounds great to me. Some towns do one article and list for each. Yeah, I think that list. might be a nice way. To that's do. what yeah. I was proposing. I think that's not, good too. Not 20 different articles. Right. Yeah. I'm all for it. We'll work up to the 20. And then, the, and then Rosemary, can they from the floor say, I want to eliminate line eight? That would be up to David. They could say they want to reduce. Yep. They can't yeah. add. They can reduce. I don't think they can add. That's another one, one for. You know, one of David's rulings is, is that, um, yeah, that under the assumption that if somebody knew it was more, they might have shown up when they didn't. So it's not fair to the voters to increase taxes. Okay, Brian, we have two added motions, added articles, economic development, and the appropriations for those. Yep. Well, $47,000 for the budget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What do you think of this one? See, I like calling it appropriations, but it's actually called like articles in the budget. Of the Hilarious. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. So, um, 
I've got a couple. Uh, were you all set, Beth? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I've got a couple of clarifications on this. Where did we land on adding estimated to article service? I said yes. I prefer it. Hey, Beth. I love it. We're going to meet so, another yeah. time. So, um, I guess Don's going to do the time break. Perhaps. So we'll add it and in. We'll fight about it again later. <laughs> I have a very small dog in that fight. Uh, 13 inches high. I think that we have a very big dog that we're just not thinking about by adding the word estimated, <laughs> but that's all right. Uh, yeah. um, how much money for the economic development? 40. 40. 50. Eric? 50. All right. I guess there's your answer. Okay. And Evan also mentioned for economic developer to we need to word it a little better bit. wording. Yeah, better. Yeah, not just a repeat of last year. So we'll all grab something. All right. Beautiful. Look up clean language when you write that one. Not, and I'm serious about the word, the term clean language. Okay. Are we Is moving there? on? Yep. Next. Rent for help home. Caretaker's department. I thought we were yep. going to talk about that. Yeah, didn't we already? We did. We have never voted on it. You would have to make an actual vote. What did, what did we decide? Five and quarters? We didn't really decide. Did we really not have an article? Well, what is it current? current. 490. 490. Yeah, we did throw out some numbers. But you have a studio apartment that you rent for what? 525. We did it by some terms to like. You mean utilities included? Yeah. yeah. I, I would it bare minimum be six fifty. My chief distributes your audience included in six fifty. Well Donnie does do some um, caretaker work for us too. Which is greatly yeah, reduced. What does he do for caretaker work now? Why are we talking about this again? Can we what did we talk about last time? Can you get can you we didn't you? vote on a change. We had discussed five hundred and twenty-five dollars. When I thought we were gonna do a dump stepping. We had also talked about stepping it, but this is what I mean. We didn't settle on Duncan had proposed five hundred and twenty-five dollars. I had proposed five hundred and fifty, and that's still very gracious. I mean, six hundred would be gracious. Yeah. So what if you did the? <laughs> Here we are, just talking about it again. Uh, make a motion that we increase the rent to five hundred and twenty-five. But it's got to give two week, uh, two months notice. And then on July 1st, it booked the 550. I'll second that motion. Do you have a motion and a second? Any discussion? I'd like it to be 550 and 575. So you're trying to get a friendly amendment? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. He doesn't want to be very friendly, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it friendly? Yes. No, not for me. There you go. But you can make a motion to amend. Wouldn't pass. You don't have to get back. But I mean, part of my reasoning for asking the question what Donnie's caretaker positions are, duties are, try to get me to understand. Okay. Ask them. What are the duties? I did. So Donnie does. A lot more when we had tenants there, he took out trash and everything else, but he still does do trash for himself in the historical society. Uh, he makes sure that there's heating in areas where it could potentially freeze. He alerts us when there's problems on the weekend and when the historical society is not in there. Um, keeps the place, the outside and the outdoors, tidy and clean. You shovel? Uh, he does shovel. I'm I'm sticking with Eric's motion mainly because to hit him with a fair market rent all in one fell swoop is six hundred is not a fair market. I know five fifty is not a fair market I know. rent. No, you don't have to foul. So I'm not hitting him with anything. So, well, but you are because he's going from four ninety to five fifty. You have studio apartments like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Which I'm not even sure if it has a bedroom or if it's just one open. It's a loft, I think. It's just a loft. But, and they go for. All right. That, Jill and Laura have to come in too. Um, 650 is utilities included. That's yeah. really, that's the cheapest you can ever hold for. Yeah. So, how much would you pay for shoveling and. Well, that kind of I'd pay somebody 30 bucks to shovel if there's one inch of snow. It takes them 15 minutes, but if they put a snow, it takes them an hour. Mm -hmm. But, you know, nobody will show up and do anything for us in 30 bucks an hour. That's true. It's 35 right. bucks an hour to back you. Mm -hmm. So, call the okay. question. What? <laughs> call the question. Call the Last question. Long call it. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, All those opposed? Nay. We need a quorum I. So that's five twenty five uh, now, five fifty. It's five twenty five in two months. Yeah. Five fifty July one. Yeah. And I'll bring you a lease sign. Yeah, that might be good. Uh, that with this effect. Yeah. So you will see it one more time. Hopefully that discussion sure. will be short. Well, Sounds good. Well, sure. Definitely will not be sure. Okay, yeah. what's up next? Moving on to Eric is trying to get away from us celebration. Uh, so how many years have you been in the select board again? 27. 27 years in the select board. I'm going to write that down. I'll have to take some jokes about the number 27. Since we started in the 90s. 96. That's your I graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that was the year but right. <laughs> um so talking with Eric about like timing of all of this so he wants to be done with us before town meeting day I can't understand what? why so we're talking about having a celebration and inviting you know people that he's worked with over the years the weekend before town meeting so March 6th I think. Um, that's the date, right? Town meeting, I think, is the seventh. Hold on, let me look. I have it right here. So it'll be fifth and fourth. It's fourth the fourth Saturday. on the fourth. It's Saturday on the fourth. Um, so, what do you think about spending a little cash on the event? Get it catered, and maybe we can. We'll have to pay rent or something. I reached out to Jenna's promise to see if it's available. Rent. Like red right space catering. <laughs> okay, Evan's cooking. <laughs> I I would fully support buying a cake or something and bringing it to the last like board meeting. I'm not going to spend tax. I'm not going to spend tax money on it. And, 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 and unfortunately, like this is the conversation we all have. You don't do it for the glory, and yeah, you put in a lot of years. A lot of people are thankful for that, but. I would actually like something where I can have the opportunity to thank all the people that I've worked with over the years. And and I I wouldn't expect a lot from the town as far as expense. So I'd like to use the office to send out invitations to time organizing it. Um, but, you know, I can swing for uh, paying for uh, the hosting of it at the uh, Jenna's promise or something like that. You could do it here. You know, I think they got better facility. But they have better facility. Already. Hosting something. I mean, I've worked with a lot of, I'm thinking like all the select board members I've worked with, the committee people that I've worked with, the legislators, even formal ones uh, that I've worked with. Uh, but you know, lead oh, the yeah, cities and towns. Personnel. Yeah, the emergency. I mean, there's a lot of people that the sheriff's department have, have supported me over the years and helped me to do that job. That's who I want to thank. But how much is that cost? I don't know. Um, I'm going to see if they'll just and that's use cheap it. Way to make it. I'm fine with figuring. I think that the anyone questions the money. I think that anyone who has served our town for 20 years or more like we should do something for them okay. um, unless i haven't served 20 years yeah, yeah i agree oh i mean we have employees uh how long was Ann here for 
there was a celebration brand. Yeah. How much taxpayer money was involved in that in time? We bought a retirement gift. Yeah, we yeah. did. We could buy a retirement It was a few hundred dollars. We approved it. Yes, I know. And trying to put it in the pairs, right? We have employees that have been here for a long time. And we didn't dole the red carpet out for it. I don't mean it to sound bad. But <laughs> I'm being blunt with you. Know, yeah. Yeah. We don't even show our employees. It, it shouldn't be a, a higher level, I guess. Yeah, no, it should be because he didn't get paid in twenty seven <laughs> years, which is and made a good living. You don't do this job for the money. I understand. I have not never taken a penny. My point is, we got to. You've been doing it for a year and a half. Understood, but 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 anyway, so I'm trying to be forward. realistic here. Okay, so we're not going to have a forum tonight. Um, but I did think about for the next time we get together. Well, it's a guarantee next time. Okay. It'll be a quick conversation. <laughs> so it's not getting logged off. We should move this to the next next meeting. Okay, okay we're moving it. Yep. Okay. TBD. So, um, okay. Next up, executive session for employee, employee review and compensation adjustments. You want to do this one, Mark? Do it. Okay, I need to go to the session as allowed by one VSA 13, 313, 15, and then it's 312. Got it. We have a motion. Second. 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 And we do expect that we will likely have a action afterward. Um, Donna, I'll really email you for real this time. Okay. Uh, I motion to adjust Jacob Earl's pay retroactively to six months from his higher date pending written union approval. Second. I'm sorry, but I'm going to ask you to repeat that just for one. Uh, hold on. We're recording. Speech to text. We're recording. Fine. Okay. Yep. I can say it again. No, I can get off the recording. It's fine. Okay. We have a second. Okay. We have a motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Ayes. Have it. I motion to recognize Ryan. Steigels uh, for greater operator skill and adjust his pay accordingly pending written union approval. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. I motion to recognize. Aye. 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 And that's how you had a vote, but you made the motion. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Are we good? Yeah. We're good. I motion to recognize Mark LaHuyer uh, as Master Road Scholar pending. He submits Master Road Scholar paperwork uh, as well as pending written union approval. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Me. Excellent. Meeting adjourned at 9.59. Right.